from the ranks of the unbeaten nine days ago by Rutgers. Louisville's wait for redemption has been agonizing. But tonight they hit the field again against South Florida with hopes of regaining their swagger. Welcome to ESPNU's College Football Primetime presented by City. Tonight from Papa John Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, it's the South Florida Bulls 7-3 on the season against 10th-ranked Louisville here from Papa John Stadium. A look at the Big East standings coming into tonight's game. Rutgers, the only unblemished team in the conference with a 9-0 record overall. Louisville and West Virginia tied for second. South Florida in third. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Adamley alongside former UCLA star Charles Arbuckle. Glad you could join us for this Big East showdown. And Charles, a lot of people in this town thought Louisville had the right stuff to play in the national championship game this year. Rutgers nine days ago burst their BCS bubble. Now the question is, does Louisville have the right stuff to bounce back? Well, Mike, they have to deal with adversity. And I think the real key with Louisville is they've had to do that all season long. Michael Bush breaks his leg in the first half of that first game against Kentucky, gone for the season. Jeff, Brian Brom, excuse me, their quarterback, injured right thumb, misses two games. And then you come back, you lose the Rutgers. What happens after that? This team, we're not quite sure, but they have to depend on the guy that they've depended on all year, and that's Brian Brown. He's been the key for this team, and he's played well before the injury and after the injury, but will the pressure get to him? You know South Florida last year, four sacks on him. They want to come after him. How will he do this game? Well, Brian was the 2005 Offensive Player of the Year in the Big East. The 2006 Offensive Surprise of the Year plays for South Florida. He's true freshman Matt Grothy. Well, Matt Grothy came in in the spring, Mike, and had a great spring. Then he came back in the fall, had an opportunity. He said, uh, Jim Levitt said, we had to put this guy on the field. We needed to use him. And when they did, they had great things from him. And the one key for him is he's great with his legs, but he can also throw the ball effectively. They have to have that tonight against Louisville. Well, a year ago, South Florida sent Louisville packing with a 45-14 win, knocked them out of the top 10. Believe me, the Cardinals haven't forgotten. Welcome back to College Football Primetime, presented by City South Florida, about to take on number 10 Louisville. South Florida won the toss and deferred to the second half, so Louisville will receive and back deep for the Cardinals. Joan Spillman and Trent Guy. Well, Mike, I Louisville think Louisville has won 16 consecutive home games here under this man's Bobby Petrino. 21 and one over the last four years. Well, if memory serves me correct, South Florida did this last year. They deferred to put their defense on against this high power Louisville offense last year. And we are underway from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. And a momentary mishandling of the football by Spillman, and he's finally spilled at the 12-yard line. And that's where Louisville will begin its first possession. A look at Louisville quarterback Brian Brown. 14 and 3 as a starter. He's got all the goods, Charles. Well, Mike, and he makes all the throws, and this, this offense is really geared around him and Harry Douglas and Mario Urudi. They have to have big plays, and that's why he has 31 career touchdown passes. Let's see if he comes out winging here. He's the fourth Brown to play here in Louisville. His brother Jeff is the quarterback coach and on the sidelines. They're going to keep it on the ground to start things off. Number 24, George Stribling, the ball carrier. As we take a look at the Louisville offense up front, the backs and receivers, Colby Smith and Brock Bolin, the running backs, Mario Urudia, Harry Douglas, and Jimmy Riley, the wide receivers, Urudia, with five touchdown receptions this year. Offensively up front, Bussy, Barlow, Wood, and Quartermaid, and Bernardo Foster. Bussy with the dubious task of protecting Brahms blind side at left tackle. Second down and seven. And Brahm out of the shotgun going across the middle. He's got his man, number 85, Harry Douglas, but he can't hang on. 
South Florida defensively, very, very active and tough up front. Josh Jewell missed Aaron Harris, Woody George, George Shelby. A week ago against Syracuse, they let a school record seven sacks. And the strength of this defense is its linebacking core. Ben Moffitt, Patrick St. Louis, and Stephen Nicholas all can fly to the football, especially Nicholas, who's got five and a half sacks in the secondary. Burnett and Williams are the safeties. Trey Williams and Mike Jenkins, the corners. Trey Williams lead the Bulls with six interceptions. Third down, seven Cardinals. Brom again out of the shotgun. And this time he's got out to get out of harm's way. Flushed out of the pocket by Josh Julmas, number 91. Well, he really wanted to go across the middle of the field, Mike. He had Jimmy Riley running under a drag route. But Stephen Ben Moffitt, excuse me, came over and obliterated the receiver going underneath. And Brian Brom had nowhere to throw the football. Back deep is Ian Randolph for South Florida. Sixth in the nation in punt returns, averaging 15.7 yards per punt return. And Getchy, the punter for Louisville, doesn't get a friendly bounce here, despite it's the fact that we're playing on Louisville's home field. Rolls back towards the 45 after a punt of 27 yards. A look at South Florida quarterback Matt Grothy, the true freshman. Well, he's one of those guys, Mike, that's a calm, posed young man. Even though he's a redshirt freshman, they said when he came in in the spring, they could see a big difference every time he stepped in there, and the players really love playing for him. He took over for Pat Julmes after the first game of the season against McNeese State, and now he's fortunate here to get great field position on South Florida's first possession of the game at the Louisville 44. Grothy rolling to his right, and he gets nailed by Peanut Whitehead, number eight, a freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. You can call him Peanut, but, man, at 6'6", 245, he's a full-grown Peanut. And when they don't block him, which they don't do here, you're going to see at the bottom of your screen, he goes free. The tackle goes inside. Walter Walker cannot do that. You can't need big number eight on not the little number eight, which is Matt Grothy in that situation. Great play by Louisville bringing pressure. They are going to do everything in their power power is Louisville to make Matt Grothy as uncomfortable as possible in that pocket. Second down in a long 19 and Grothy showing you why he's also South Florida's leading rusher with eight touchdowns as well. Offensively for South Florida, the backs and receivers. Let's take a look. Benjamin Williams and is the running back. The wide receivers are Marcus Edwards, Ian Randolph, S.J. Green, Will Bleakley is the tight end. Randolph, their leading receiver. The offensive line, Dial, Huners, Capona, Schmidt, and Walker. Capona, a former tight end. Third down and 13 for the Bulls. And this place does get loud. Out of the shotgun, Grothy going for it all. He's got a man, and he's throwing in a double coverage. And it's picked off. Number 21, William Gay, with his fourth interception of the season for the Cardinals. Well, Mike, not a good decision by Grothy. You know, that's one of those ones where you really have to stay, say, either run the ball or get rid of it. He throws it right in the double, triple coverage. He's, he's trying to go down the middle of the field, and it's just not there, and he hangs the ball up. It's a little windy tonight, a little cold, so the ball doesn't carry. William Gay is three. Cardinal defenders, actually four, and only two receivers, so it's a disadvantage. <laughs> well, the good thing is that interception was as good as a punt, and as a consequence, Louisville begins their second possession deep in their own territory at their three-yard line, the fourth interception of the year for Gay. And Brom going to the airwaves right away. He's got a man open, and we may get a flag. No. Harry Douglas, the intended receiver, broken up nicely by Mike Jenkins, and a huge boo here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Well, Mike, I thought he played that exceptionally well. I didn't see much of uh, uh, interference there. The fans may want that, but he was in perfect position to make that play. Once again, Brian Brown throws the ball up kind of high. The wind is blowing, so when it's like that on a cold night, that ball doesn't carry, just like in baseball. If the hitters are up there, the ball, a lot of those balls die at the warning track. You can see the, the wind blowing, and if you throw it high, it gets caught up in there. 
blowing across the field here and Brom on second and ten keeps the ball on the ground and he is met by those South Florida linebackers the give was to Anthony Allen for no gain maybe a loss of a, a yard or so Ben Moffitt the first man to hit him, the middle linebacker, number 59 for the Bulls. Well, you have Moffitt, you have Stephen Nicholas, and you have Pat St. Louis. So pick your poison. This guy here is a former weightlifter in that area, Moffitt. Brian Brown has to find a way to combat this. In the running plays, you got to get something out of. Moffitt, 92 tackles this year, three sacks. And Brown on third and ten to give to Colby Smith. And he gets next to nothing. Great team speed on the part of the Florida Bulls. And what did they say yesterday? Paul Petrino said, these guys are fast on defense. We have to do well on first down, and we have to convert third downs. That's two drives in a row where they're three and out. And they have to do a better job, Louisville, that is, of combating this. It becomes a field position game, and they lose some confidence. Ian Randolph back again at the 50-yard line, now he takes a couple of steps into Louisville territory. Corey Getschi is back punting for Louisville. And calling for the fair catch is Randolph, and he does so at the 45-yard line. So South Florida begins their second possession in Louisville territory after that punt of 38 yards. We're just underway here from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Nine thirty three to go here in the first quarter no score between South Florida and Louisville the Bulls about to go on offense with young quarterback Matt Grothy who leads the team not just in passing but in rushing as well last week he set a school record three hundred and sixty four sixty four yards completing seventy one percent of his passes for two touchdowns he did throw one pick however but the Bulls won big over Syracuse. He'll begin this possession at the Louisville 45 yard line. Grothy keeps it himself. You know, and being a dual quarterback like this, a double threat, so to speak, here's some of the other guys in the country who have similar numbers. Chris Nixon from Vanderbilt and also Andy Schmidt from Eastern Michigan. But it is a blessing and a curse because while it's great that your quarterback can make plays with his feet you don't want to get him hurt well yeah and that's the one thing he's a young guy still developing his game and he got hurt a little bit earlier in the season they're going to do the fake the reverse and now throw it to the man who is faking the reverse number 18 amari jackson that pass is incomplete well, they, Rothy off the mark again that's a staple of this offense the reverses you saw it on the first one ian randolph these, these receivers have 19 runs for the whole season. Ian Randolph is involved in that, Taurus Johnson and Amari Jackson. They like to use that, but they can also use Grothy in the running game. We haven't even seen Ricky Ponton or Ben Williams run the ball so far tonight. Four wide receivers set for South Florida on third and five. Grothy fires. Broken up nicely by Nate Harris the middle linebacker intended for amp hill number six well and you had William Gay right there also William Gay is always around the football in Tall Tallahassee Florida the senior has been playing since his freshman year he's got a lot of experience and they love the way he plays that shutdown corner position he, he, what did Mike Cassidy say yesterday you can end up on sports center either on the good side or, or the, the bad, bad side. side and it might as well be the, the good side the same yeah. thing that can make you laugh can make you cry and the DBs understand that perfectly so another punting attempt here Harry Douglas is back at his own seven yard line for Louisville Justin Tichy's kick rolls into the end zone and Finally, Louisville will get a bit of field position from their own 20-yard line as Tichy's kick rolls out of the end zone, back with more from Louisville. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. Earn rewards points in more ways than ever with City and Remington Titanium Shavers. Nice November night in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and head coach Bobby Petrino hoping it turns into an even better night 
Well, Mike, if you look here, Louisville has lost nine days ago. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but normally you have six days to prepare, then play another game. South Florida, on the other hand, it's been almost a month since their last loss. And the, the wait for redemption, as I said at the top of the show, has been agonizing for this team, waiting to redeem itself and show its fans that it is indeed one of the top teams in the country. Colby Smith, the ball carrier that time. Tackled by Jeremy Burnett, number 33. Yeah, and we normally put up a stat, but it's so important to think about how Louisville is going to respond. And also, if you think of South Florida, they've been in existence 10 years, and they're on a winning streak. And the other thing about them is they have to have an opportunity now. In, in the next two weeks, it's going to define how they do. Well, so far, I don't know, maybe it's because of the brisk temperatures tonight. Neither team has responded, at least offensively. Brom looking... To Finally getting flushed out of the pocket and people in his face. I'll tell you what, this defense is as fast as advertised. Yeah. That was Jared Bowie in his face, number 90. You know, thinking of boxing, Muhammad Ali, if you really go to it, Louisville is, they don't know how to play South Florida. It starts like this every time. South Florida just seems to have their number. Even here, all the receivers were covered downfield. Pressure coming. Brian, Brian Brown does a great job of getting rid of the football. But sometimes you have a guy that you just can't play or match up well with. South Florida feels like defensively they can do what they want to do against these guys. So third down and nine for Brom. Empty backfield. Five wide receivers. Three-man rush. Brom with time, and he overthrows his man, number 85, Harry Douglas. Every single time, Mike, they're hitting receivers and not allowing them to run free. So Louisville will punt for the third consecutive time. Corey Getchy back to punt and Ian Randolph back deep. All by his lonesome at the 35 yard line. And look at Brom talking to his coach on the sideline. Randolph fields it at his 39. And good special teams coverage on the part of the Cardinals. First met by number 34, Bobby Buchanan. Hey, lace up your skates for college hockey action tomorrow on ESPNU. It all starts at 3 Eastern with a meeting between two of the nation's top teams as the seventh ranked Boston College Eagles and the number two ranked Black Bears of Maine battle on the ice. College hockey on ESPNU tomorrow, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. We are College Sports. Well, something's got to give offensively. Got to give offensively for these two football teams. Now South Florida gets their third chance to be. And they'll keep it on the ground. The give is to Ricky Ponton, number five. Mike, you got the sense of talk, talking to the Louisville folks. They had to get their swagger back, and it's awful difficult when you don't play. And they've been off for a while, and they, you know that's one of the things. You got to come back, and how you come back is the key. Here's a team that if they can run the table, they've got Pittsburgh. They're at Pittsburgh next week, and then they finish things up against Connecticut, assuming that Rutgers stumbles along the line. Could still win the Big East title, or at least tie for it. And Brophy having the same kind of <laughs> problems that Brahm is having. Yeah, neither quarterback looking very sharp early on. You know, Grothy's balls are high, he's really throwing a lot of high, high fastballs. <laughs> Guys can't come up with the receptions, and then they're putting themselves in third and long situations, both teams. So far tonight, South Florida 0 for 2 on third down. And they face a third and nine here. And Grothy all by himself in the South Florida backfield. Four wide receivers set. Actually, five wide receivers. And Grothy in trouble. Usually what that means if you don't have <laughs> a running back back there is there's going to be a mismatch. Brandon Cox from Atlanta, Georgia, the junior, 
with the heady play. Well, I mean, Brandon gets his first sack on the season, and the reason why, they come with a little pressure, and then when Grothy sees it, he tries to go out. Now they spy Brandon Cox. You see how he went over the top? Watch, you're going to see him coming through your screen, 88. He goes all the way to the other side of the field to make sure Grothy doesn't have that free running lane. Good defense. So Tichi, Justin Tichi, back to punt again. This one fielded by Trent Guy. Almost broke a tackle there and might have gotten away for more yardage. Instead, he goes down at the 32-yard line. Louisville about to begin their fourth offensive possession of the night, looking for something to show for it. Back with more after this. Welcome back to College Football Primetime, presented by City. A look inside the Louisville huddle. There is head coach Bobby Petrino, and what a job he has done here in his fourth year. A 37-9 record. He's taken this team to three bowl games and won eight games or nine games in each of his three seasons here. His counterpart on the other side doing a tremendous job as well at South Florida with basically a commuter school and he's turned it into a very very good football program in a short period of time. Brom 0 for 4 until there. Finally connects with his rangy wide receiver Mario Arudia. Trey Williams on the coverage. This is a mismatch here. Arudia 6'6". Williams just 5'10". And Arudia is still a baby. He's still he's still learning the game. He's a sophomore, but he makes tremendous plays. 7.7 .7 yards per catch. Brom tonight, one of five, and that was their first first down of the night. And they also have the best field position they've enjoyed all night. This time, Brom pitches it to the fullback. That's Brock Bolin, transfer from Illinois, a sophomore, six feet, 237 pounds, out of Germantown, Ohio. Tripped up by Ryan Gilliam backup cornerback for South Florida. And, and Bolin gets a chance to run the football. He's not one of those just purely blocking fullbacks. 26 carries on the year, one touchdown. Average is about 6.8, so he's probably lobbying every day. Coach Petrino, when are you going to give me more runs? <laughs> I can get more yards for you if you let me run the football. He's gone out. Colby Smith is in instead. And Brom is rushed out of the pocket. Smith catches the football, but there's a flag in the Louisville backfield. You know, Louisville has, it may be a holding. I'm not sure it's in that area. But the one thing with Louisville is they gave up that second half, that pressure that Brom had. you got to figure, South Florida watched the film, and they said, we did this last year to them. Yeah, holding. It is be Number 77 offense. 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Replay second down. And that's the biggest problem. The offensive line has not played well. You're going to see this holding right there on the edge of your screen. George Bussey. In that's the middle. Is our, well, he was. it was a couple of holdings. You see right outside, then you see in the middle, there's about there's three 77 or 77 to center, Eric Wood pulling his man down. There was multiple holes on that play. That was the backup free safety. Danny Verpale, he was pulling down. Because of the pressure that they're bringing. Second down and 17. Pump fake by Brom underneath route. Very well run. Jawan Spillman, a freshman, true freshman, not a true freshman, a redshirt freshman, makes his hometown here in Louisville, and he picks up the first down. I like this play, Mike, because they're going to use him, and I think he is a true freshman because they talked a lot about him. He's, he's great in the return game. They get the ball underneath almost a screen to one side, but he has such great ability that they give him room outside. You see his lineman out front blocking for him. Great call. And for a change, Brian Brom had some time to throw. Out of the shotgun, he's got more time again. And, the, and he picks up the first down. Arudia, the wide receiver, tackled by Jerome Murphy. Well, what they're doing a very good job of Louisville is, is finding out where the blitz is coming from, and then they're going against that. 
That last play was a, a screen that was set up perfectly. The play, and then this play right here, Yerudia sitting down at about 15 yards. He's able. He's a tall target for Brom to find. Rudy, a 38 catches, 671 yards this year. South Florida barely got that timeout, excuse me, Mike, because Ben Moffitt and Steven Nicholas didn't like something, and they were begging the official to give them a timeout. Jim Levitt able to get it for his team. The guard scored 40 more points in any home game. You can take your game tickets up to any area kiddo. The Mexican girl with a fine. Welcome back to uh, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium here in Louisville, Kentucky. As 10th ranked Louisville takes on the University of South Florida Bulls, 7 and 3 this year, and a team that beat them 45 to 14 a year ago. I'm Mike Adamley alongside Charles Arbuckle. And what's been impressive so far is, has been South Florida's defense, much like it was a year ago in a game that we did. But it looks like, as you mentioned, that they're starting to figure out what they're yeah. doing defensively, Louisville. Well, they script their eight, first eight to 12 plays to get a real good feeling of what they're going to do. And you can see last year when these two teams played that the first eight, 12 plays didn't work for them. And they didn't so far tonight, but they're doing better. But you can see Amari Jackson with all the yards. He had three touchdowns. And they beat a ranked opponent for the first time. Louisville, on the other hand, the turnovers really killed them. And then they had a nine-game winning streak going at that time. If you, it, it, and it was just it one was, of those it games. Was, it was not unlike yeah. the Rutgers game this year. It was just more of South Florida getting on them early and never letting them get up. But it looks like Brom and company have found the rhythm so far offensively here on this drive. Their first visit inside South Florida territory. Brom rolls right and then hits his man to the left. That's Gary Barnage, the tight end. Just 16 catches this year. They don't go to the tight end all that often, but when they do, they're successful. Well, Mike, the other thing with Louisville is they like to score fast, and I think they, they tell us they like to play with a tempo. And when they go out and they don't get that tempo going in the first two series, sometimes it's tougher for them. But you can see here, they really have a good rhythm. They're calling the right plays. They made the adjustments after those first two series. Second down and one after that nine-yard reception by Barnage. And they'll go the conventional route, giving it to their tailback, Anthony Allen. He picks up the first down. Tackled by Carlton Williams. Dariante Taylor had an outstanding block on Ben Moffitt, number 47. I mean, he just, he, he went in there, and Ben Moffitt was standing there, and he just, he moved him out of there. And that's what you need on those ISO blocks. The Ariante is 5'8", 239. Short guy, but boy, he, and he unlike, packs a while. Yeah, unlike Bowen, he is brought in there as a yeah, fullback for yeah. one thing and one thing only, block. He and Anthony Allen come in in that big package, and you can see why. Tailback, Colby Smith is back in the game for the Cardinals. And they've got another first down on the South Florida 28-yard line. And Colby Smith wide open down inside the five-yard line, down to the three. He fumbled, fumbled the, the football, and it was recovered by George Selvey. Well, Mike, it was a great play call. And Colby Smith catches the ball because they move everybody over to the other side of the field. Now he's going down the field. It's a great tackle and pull of the ball out. And you Mike, can see, yeah, watch it from behind. He was stripped of the football before he hit the ground. Good call by the officials. The recovery made by Mike Jenkins. But the fans are thinking that he was down before the ball came out. You know, if you're South Florida, they're going to get out there pretty quick. But from that angle, it looked tough. The ball looked like it was coming out before his knee went down. They are, they are going to look at this. I think they'll see the same thing that we saw from up here. The ball is clearly yeah. out before... Colby Smith's knee hit the ground. Great hustle play by. You know, a lot of times defensive linemen give up on plays. That could have been a touchdown, but he not only saves a touchdown, he causes a fumble and they get the recovery. That's all one, two. 6'4, 255, a freshman from Pensacola, Florida. Watch it one more time. There's Selby from behind the strip. Yep. The other angle is a little bit better. Even with the official, the back judge moves out the way. You see the ball clearly out. Yep. Then the knee goes down. 
but Selvi with great hustle. Like I said, they get, they had a great. They were moving the ball effectively because they cleared everybody out, and Colby Smith going down the field. First down, South Florida. <laughs> Fans are upset, but that was clearly, <laughs> it didn't take them long either to figure that out. Well, Louisville has dominated so far 62 yards of total offense. University of South Florida, zero. Brophy, play action fake, gutsy call out of his own end zone and making the catch. Amari Jackson with a great catch. We talked about him last year, big number 18. Former basketball player at Hillsborough City College, and what did he do? He worked every day after basketball practice because he wanted to play. And, and, and here's the basketball coming into play, like Mario Urudia on the other side. Well, I just throw it high. I got pressure coming again in my face. Preston Smith right there, but not able to get to him in enough time. A great catch. And that was just a jump ball, grabbed the rebound for the 6'5, 195 pound junior, Amari Jackson. Ricky Ponton on the last carry, tackled by Malik Jackson, the outside linebacker for Louisville. Gain of seven. Ricky Ponton was supposed to be the main guy, got in a little trouble, with not, did not play the first part of the season, finally coming back. He's right, right alongside Grothy. They operate out of that sort of spread offense. Loss of one. That time by a Moby Okoye, the senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. He's quite a story for Louisville. Six sacks this year. And a Moby just 19 years old. 0 for 3 on third down conversions tonight. Not one of their strong suits this season. Let's see what happens here. Grothy finds his man out of the shotgun. Nicely done. Taurus. Number 89, Taurus Johnson. Taurus Johnson. Yeah, Taurus Johnson had a, you know, he's one of those guys that makes plays for you in the passing game. Had five receptions last week against Syracuse for 131 yards and one touchdown. This is what you have to have to move the chains. And Taurus Johnson is right in position to make the play under Preston Smith, a linebacker trying to come out and cover underneath because there's five wides and it was with a base package this time they have four wides they give it to Ponton up the middle a gain of nine dragged down from behind by a Moby Okoye well and if you look at South Florida they want to be similar to West Virginia even though they don't have Slayton and White right but they still want to run the similar. football yeah they have a similar spread offense so their linemen move over they create running lanes and a guy like Ricky Ponton small enough to find those holes West Virginia had a pretty good game plan against Louisville, but Louisville was able to score with them and shut them down on offense. On second and one, play action fake. Grothy going deep. Amari Jackson's got the ball, a step on his man, and inside the four-yard line, he beat Rod Council, who's the backup cornerback. <laughs> we, we said last, we said earlier, Amari Jackson just seems to show up against his team. Great play call. Everybody goes over. You see the linebackers and the safeties moving to one side. That creates space. Amari Jackson just runs by Rod Council. I mean, this is just a great play by Amari ja Jackson, but also a great throw by Matt Brophy. Brophy decides to keep it himself. You know, that's why he's taking over this team, Mike. They felt like he could come in and just command a lot of respect. Two-time state champion guy in his high, at his high school career. Now the question is, can they punch it in for a touchdown? They'll have to do so when the second quarter begins in a moment. You are watching ESPNU Primetime College Football presented by City. South Florida and Louisville in a scoreless tie as we begin second quarter play. South Florida with the football at the six yard line. Grothy looking to the end zone. 
overthrew his wide receiver, Ian Randolph, number 80, and there's a flag on the play. You know, Grothy had a receiver out in front of him, Mike, but he just kind of waited and waited. Guy in the flat didn't really want to go to him. Ricky Ponton was out there kind of waiting for a check down. Holding, number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Replay second down. <laughs> Walter Walker having a tough game. We saw him earlier give up a sack by sliding in as opposed to staying out and then that holding call right there. Those are the kind of negative plays that hurt you when you get down here close and have an opportunity to score, whether you're South Florida or Louisville. Still an impressive drive. Seven plays, 93 yards. It began from their own one yard line. Now they've got a second and goal from the Louisville 11. Grothy on the quarterback keeper. Inside the 15, knocked out of bounds at about the 12 by Gavin Smart. You know, Mike, we also have to give credit to South Florida on this drive. They've done a good job of protecting Grothy and, and moving the football well on the ground as well as in the air. You know, the big play to Amari Jackson, when you look at it, he had to have time to throw. And this offense seems to be getting their rhythm much like Louisville. Well, they would like to capitalize despite the fact that they're one of the worst. They are the worst team in the Big East in red zone offense this year. He's in big trouble is Grothy. Malik Jackson, fast, physical, a 4-4 guy. That's his sixth sack of the season. That was a great play call by Louisville, coming with pressure on that side. It was an overload, and Grothy had nowhere to go with the football. And you talk about Malik Jackson running, you know, you talk about guys running routes. Well, he, he played the quarterback position better than Matt Grothy on that play. So Delbert Alvarado on to attempt a 37-yard field goal. Last week, he set a Big East record against Syracuse, hitting it one from 56 yards. This one is wide right. Actually hit a piece of the goal post, it looked like maybe. He struggled on the short kicks, but he could kick them longer. His roommate is Matt Grothy, and he says, hey, this guy, I trust him on the longer kicks, but he struggles somewhat on the shorter kicks. The man to his left, number 28, did the majority of kicking this year, a guy named Mike Benzer, and then his leg kind of went south on him. And so Jim Levert went to Delbert Alvarado and got some dividends last week against Syracuse. At that time, he's off the mark, and we're still scoreless here in Louisville. And they were going into the end. You can see the goal post. It's blowing. The wind is really blowing from that way, and the ball just hung up there and never got any movement on it. So Brian Brom and company begin from their own 20-yard line. Nice cutback move by George Stripling, number 24. See the goal post there where the wind is blowing. Yeah. It's, and it's crosswind. It's sometimes it's blowing back into the field. Sometimes it's blowing to the, the left, as you can see there. But... George Stripling getting an opportunity, and I think he's a good change of pace for this Louisville team. You can see the total yards pretty pretty close to each other, but Colby Smith and George Stripling do play quite a bit. Well, that's a huge void that Louisville's had to uh, fill this year when Michael Bush, a guy who I thought was a potential high school trophy candidate, Gary Barnage, the recipient of that last knocked out of bounds by Stephen Nicholas as Louisville picks up the first down. Well, Carlton Williams and Stephen Nicholas, but outstanding ball handling by Brian Brown. And then that opens up space. It gives him an opportunity. But look at that. Stephen Nicholas trying to get up in there with that right hand and knock the ball out. Nicholas, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida, and he was the one player that Louisville was worried about most. Going up and trying to get the football, Rudia. Trey Williams did an outstanding job of staying with Urudia. And you know what he did, Mike? He knew he had the taller guy. But as soon as Urudia went up, he's going to go up with him. Watch the replay here. Brian Brom has time to throw the football. Doesn't hang much, but even if it does, look at that. Just plays that perfectly and strips it out right at the last second. Now, Yerudia usually takes these balls away and comes up with the reception. But Trey Williams played that outstanding. 
Second down and 10, Louisville. From their own 44. Brom gives to Colby Smith. He bounces it outside into South Florida territory. Steven Nicholas knocks him out of bounds, finally. Well, Pat St. Louis was fooled by something. The linebacker on the weak side is going to be inside. 54, watch him down there. He's going to go inside and get blocked and chopped. Good block, but he's out of position, and that's why Colby Smith has an excellent room on that particular play. Good run by Colby Smith. Good run, big game, first down Louisville. The South Florida 35, Brom throwing, stepping up into the pocket and looking for Yerudia again. That time, heavy pressure applied by the inside people for the Bulls. You know, a lot of people always say, well, you know, why do DBs get burned or why don't I, I mean, but you look at the, the pass rush that's coming. It's not always with five, six guys. That front four has to get to Brom, and when they do, they force him into throws that he doesn't want to make. He doesn't want to throw it that early. Started this game a little slow, to say the least. Since then, six of eight for 85 yards, and he's got the Cardinals on the move here. Still looking for our first score of the football game. Brom, the three-step drop. Rudy, the intended receiver, the ball hit the ground first, and there's a flag down. Call that roughing the pass. Well, South Florida gets penalized a lot, Mike. Roughing the passer, blow to the helmet. Number 90, defense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, automatic first down. Joe Bowie guilty of the infraction and an unnecessary penalty, that's for sure. Those are the kind that drive coaches crazy. But you know what I think it is? Sometimes it's reputation. And, and sometimes, you know, even if a guy touches wrong, South Florida gets penalized a lot, and it becomes the M.O., and the officials start looking for it. You know that. True enough. True enough. First down for the Cardinals. Juwan Spillman. 5'10, 161 pounds. You can see that that water bug yeah. kind of. You know, and I like that play call. Yeah, coming, very coming, good play call. You know, you come with that and, and you have Spillman who's got return capability, and you get him out in space to try to put him in a position where he can make some moves and make a couple of guys miss. Seventh play of a very good drive for Louisville coming up here. Second down and six at the South Florida 16-yard line. Think about it. The last drive they should have scored or been in position to at least kick a field goal. Yerudia in motion. They give it inside to Bowen. He likes carrying that nice little cutback move there. Hey, he must have lobbied. I, I was just kidding <laughs> when I said that, but Bowen... Now you got the big guy, the fullback coming in making some But usually they they run just north yeah. and south. He had a nice little move. He's planted his right foot and then cut it back to the left. Oh, and they've done that running back by committee ever since Michael Bush has been gone. They've been very effective with it. So Brock Bowling has to be happy. You know, sophomore out of Germantown, Ohio, who's got an opportunity to carry the ball a little bit more than he normally would. The result, another... Louisville first down. They've got a first and goal just inside the 10. This time the give is to Colby Smith or Anthony Allen, number 42. Tackled by Pat St. Louis, the outside linebacker for South Florida. And this is the area where Anthony Allen comes into play. He has eight touchdowns on the year. So if they get into that position where they feel closer to scoring the football, they want to get him in there and pound him. Talked about the big shoes that somebody had to fill for Michael Bush, who was hurt in the first game of the season this year against Kentucky. Tonight, Louisville's had five different people carry the football. Harry Douglas gets hammered after that pass reception. Jeremy Burnett right there. I mean, we talked about that last year, and I think whenever I've watched South Florida on film, even when they lose games, they will hit you. I mean, that's one of the things that they, they, they pride themselves on. Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, says his guys fly to the football. He wants them to hit, hit, and hit. 
You know, and Louisville realizes that, and they, they're a physical bunch as well, so it's nice to see these two teams match up. Well, Louisville learned that, learned that the hard way last year. They got taken to the woodshed, losing 45-14 that game down in Tampa. Third and goal, they're going to call this play off. The flag was thrown. A wide open Harry Douglas, but this one might be coming back. Let's see who the, the fractions again. Brom doesn't think so, that's for sure. If it's not against Louisville, great play call by Paul Petrino again. Offsides, line up in the neutral zone. Number 91 defense. The penalty is the time. Touchdown. And, you know, South Florida with so much team speed, they like to run to the football. Louisville played into that. Fake one way and had Harry Douglas come in motion. He's going to. Well, it took them uh, the better part of a quarter to get it, the job done. But Louisville finally on the scoreboard after the touchdown pass, Brian Brom to Harry Douglas, and they've given the fans, even the young ones here, plenty to cheer about at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville, as they lead seven nothing after the 10 play 80 yard drive. Todd Flannery in the game now to kick off for Louisville and back deep. It's Taurus Johnson and Ian Randolph. Johnson's got it at his own goal line, and he gets sandwiched big time. Number 10, Nate Harris. And we go join Mike Call in the studio for a Sports Center U in game update. Mike. Fellas, a huge day of college football continues this evening. Here's Cincinnati Rutgers. Since he already has a lead, this is Nick Davila, the backup QB with the keeper and the touchdown. And how about this? Undefeated Rutgers in trouble, down 10 to nothing. Meanwhile, Wake Forest's magical run is in trouble as well. They're down 7-3 at the half. All right, thanks, Mike. It should be uh, noted that uh, Louisville led Rutgers <laughs> at halftime as well. Again, operating out of that spread offense, Ricky Ponton doing a nice job of running, breaking a couple of tackles. William Gay finally brings him down deep in the secondary. Mike, if you close your eyes, you would think he's Andre Hall from last year. But when Ricky Ponton gets going, and this offense is very effective with him running downhill, they open space, he'll make one cut and move, and then he's gone. That offensive line does a good job of getting pushed on the Louisville defensive line. Ponton remains in the game. Grothy operating out of the shotgun. They're going to give it to Ponton again, and he finds a little bit of running room inside. Zach Anderson, number 96, brings him down. Zach Anderson with great hustle moves around there and makes sure he gets up there and gets a tackle. You see more defensive linemen now at that 260, 270 range on the ends that can really get up the field and go five yards and then run just as hard 30 yards the other way. Anderson's one of those kind of people, that's for sure. Second down and 10. Crowd doing its job of ratcheting up the crowd noise. Grothy, a tough pass to throw in between three people. Taurus Johnson, the receiver, they're going to call it incomplete, though. Brandon Sharp did a nice job of breaking up the play. It looked like Johnson had it for a moment, and then Sharp, bang. Well, Sharp made sure he didn't hold on to it. They come only with four guys. Good protection up front. Grothy puts the ball in there on the corner route. Boom! That's a great hit and timing of it by Sharp. He's one of those physical guys at strong safety. 5'11", 195, 42 tackles this season. Growth, growthy, three of eight tonight. Third and ten. Looking for Johnson again. That little underneath route. Well, when you have ten players there, no chance for it to work. And I tell you what, Louisville, after that score, and that little hangover and that little rust all goes out the window because they are coming now. Number 13, John Russell blew that play up from his free safety position. And Justin Tichy back to punt for yet another time. 
Spillman and Trent Guy are back deep for the Cardinals. Spillman or Guy rather calling for the fair catch. And the Cards will take over after that punt of 29 yard lines. Louisville seven, South Florida nothing, 826 remaining in the second quarter. It's November here in uh, Louisville and a little bit cold and time to bring out the parkas and some candy to warm things up. Louisville with a 7-0 lead here. 8.15 remaining in the second quarter of play. Bolin is going to look to throw the football. No, it's not Bolin. It's number 42, Anthony Allen. As we take a look at the ESPNU All-State BCS standings, obviously Ohio State has uh, claimed one spot in the national championship game. The question now becomes what happens to Michigan, Charles? I, I think Michigan shouldn't drop any more than to the third spot. Maybe USC moved up above them after they played an outstanding game and stand with that high-powered Ohio State offense. And a reminder that number six Rutgers losing 10-0 to Cincinnati at the moment. Brom across the middle, Harry Douglas. Nice timing pattern there. Danny Verpale finally brings him down, number 17 for South Florida. Well, and you, you see the offense really getting in gear now, getting them off balance. And Louisville, you saw at the number 10 spot in that BCS deal. So, yeah, you know, they, they would have loved to have stayed up there. USC number yeah. three, Florida made a, another yeah. strong case. They beat West Carolina today, what, 63 to nothing? <laughs> Brahms numbers on the evening, 9 of 15, 110 yards, and he's going for more here. What a catch. Official says he's out, out of bounds, yeah. Mario Yerudia. And there's a flag on this play also. Going to come back against Louisville. Yerudia, you know, you just can use the sideline with him with six, the 6'6 six, six frame. And he's really developed. It, when we saw him last year, he was good. Ten yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Replay first down. But he's much better at running his routes now. When you watch him on film, he does such a much better job of, of getting in and out of breaks. And this penalty wipes out a tremendous catch by Yerudia, who played his high school football uh, very close to this stadium. Uh, yeah, they would have reviewed that. He would have had that as a catch. He made a catch. He made a catch. Look at the replay there. One foot down, the other one down in the college one. The officials would have, they, uh, Louisville would have challenged that if they had not had that penalty. Second, second penalty of the night for assessed against Louisville. That's Bolin that time, Brock Bolin. Transfer from Illinois. Tackled by George Selby, number 95 for South Florida. We talk about the linebackers for South Florida, but George Selby quietly is putting up a great season. 8.5 tackles for loss, 5.5 sacks. 60 tackles, just a hustle guy though, out of Pensacola, Florida. That sets up the second down and 18 for the Cards. Ball just inside South Florida territory. Empty backfield, five wide receivers set for the Cardinals. Brom steps up in the pocket. How he managed to break away from that tackle from Alan Cray, <laughs> I don't Truly know. amazing. And let's go to Mike Call in the ESPNU studios. What's happening with Rutgers? Well, it's getting very interesting, my friends. This is Mike Teal under pressure, and that is not the throw he wants. D'Angelo Smith with the pick and the score. 83 yards, and it is 17 to nothing. Undefeated Rutgers down. Wow. Wow, indeed. And that, well, number 94, Alan Cray, the guy who made oh. a pretty decent defensive play there, being helped off the field. Yeah, he almost had Brian Brom on that last play. And Mike, you know, we talk about Louisville, how they would respond, but what about Rutgers? <laughs> they are not. Well, yeah, they're, they're, by no stretch of the imagination are they, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I think that Louisville needed to be reminded was that look at the schedule down the road. Yeah. Rutgers still has a date in Morgantown was yeah. West, West Virginia. So this this Big East title isn't sewn up yet. And Cincinnati 
beat South Florida. They match up well with Rutgers, and that was a key that I thought about as soon as the game was over with Louisville. When you look at the Big East, you know, you can never take for granted anything that can happen. UConn today gets beat by who? Syracuse. So, you know, it, it, you just you have to play the game. Alan Cray is getting off on his own power. But moving very slowly. So Louisville will face a third and 15. Let's see we can ha see what happened to Alan Gray on the play. There he is grabbing Brom from behind. Good clean. Going for the sacks. Slid outside. How Brian was able how, to yeah. slide out of that. That was a real Houdini move there. Yeah. He'll have to be Houdini to pick up this third down conversion. Third down and 13. The underneath handoff to George Stripling gets it inside the 40 yard line but well short of the first down mark. George Busey had a good block going but they just couldn't quite get the yardage they needed. And it looks like Louisville is going to go for it on this fourth down. They're in that position where they're too far for a field goal and they feel like this offense is really going. And they quite frankly played very well against South Florida's offense. Number nine, Chris Vaughn, another wide receiver in the game for Louisville. Flags all over the place. Prior to the snap, false start, 68 offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Well, Chris Robinson knew what he was doing by pointing across the line of scrimmage. He's well, George Bussey is going to get started. 68. He's moving right there. You see, and Chris Robinson, the smart thing for a defensive lineman, come across and then point. Show him. That makes him now have to go into the punt mode. Too far to go for that first down. Getchy, Corey Getchy, punting from his own 41 yard line. Another flag on the play. Whistles blow before the. Now Chris Robinson may be the guilty party. <laughs> he came across on that end now. He's saying no, it was the guy on the end of the line. But all the Louisville players are saying it was 49. Now the officials have to have a, a, a conference on this one. But it looked like Chris Robinson was clearly offside before the snap. Now the interesting thing, Mike, will they go for it when they get those five yards back? They were prior to the snap. Or... Snap infraction. Number 40 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Wow. Dane Mattingly, the long snapper for head coach Bobby Petrino. Let's see if he does the double clutch here. See between the legs of number six. Ah. Well, it didn't, really didn't look like it. I didn't see it from here. We got a great view of it, and he wasn't moving. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's fourth and 17, and they're they're definitely punting. Getchy now from about his 37 yard line. Ian Randolph called for the fair catch and that's where South Florida will begin their next possession on their 10 yard line after their punt of 39 yard by Corey Getchy. Louisville leading South Florida 7-0. Well a year ago South Florida took Louisville to the woodshed. Shock a team that was ranked in the top 10. Really on the heels of Amari Jackson had an outstanding game. Catching the football on reverses. You know, he was just all over the field that night. And I think Louisville knows where he is. They're really going to look for him. He also threw a touchdown in this game, but just had an outstanding day last year. The result was a 45-14 win over then number nine. Louisville knocked them out of the top 10. Tonight, however, South Florida finding the offensive going to be a much tougher deal.
Grothy running the football, tackled by Zach Anderson again. Yep. <laughs> 96. He's just he's finding ways to get there. And then Mari Jackson, look at his total last year: 149 total yards, three touchdowns versus his Louisville defense. Tonight, only two receptions, 55 yards. So they know where he is every single play. Play action fake. Grothy avoids a tackle in his own end zone. Got him, oh, in and out of the hands of Amari Jackson. I, I think Amari Jackson almost gave up on that route. Matt Grothy got away from Zach Anderson, and Amari Jackson slowed down just enough where he couldn't quite come up with that pass. Now watch, right here, great move by Grothy of getting away. And then he's gonna throw the ball. You don't see it on here, but Amari Jackson kind of slows down. You see how he's trying to speed back up? And when you do that, he should catch the football, but that that hesitation or that pause stopped him from going and making that catch. That's always it always happens. You run some great highlights of a player, and then when he's the go-to guy in a particular play, he doesn't come through. Third down and ten. Grothy buying some time and then finding his man for the first down, Ian Randolph, number 80. That was a great throw by Grothy. He had Malik Jackson coming in his face. He kept running towards the sideline. At the last minute, he just turns around and Ian Randolph sits in the pocket in the zone and just he's able to fire the football. That was a great play by the young quarterback. But that's what they haven't had enough of. South Florida hadn't had enough of those big plays, whereas Louisville's defense has really clamped down once they've started driving the football. Just five first downs tonight for South Florida. Grothy running that little quarterback. Well, you know, the other thing that they're doing, Louisville, it seems like every time he's getting ready to run, there are four or five guys just waiting on him. Peanut Whitehead was one of them, but that whole defense knows if he gets, if he tucks the ball and he runs with it, and that doesn't hurt them having played a team like West Virginia, where you have to guard against the quarterback and the running back. Second down and 11. You give it to Ponton, or actually number 30, Benjamin Williams, yeah. sophomore out of Lake Wales, Florida. Malik Jackson on the tackle. Louisville defender down. That's Peanut Whitehead grabbing his shoulder. Seven yards. He's in some pain. Uh, interesting story about Benjamin Williams. There's a walk on. Yeah. He's going to come in and take a hit. It, oh, man. Helmet to helmet. Yeah, Nate Harris. Nate Harris. That's the most dangerous place in football to be, up by the pile, coming in. Third down and four. Grothy's going to keep it again. And, Charles, i got to believe that eventually you run the football that much, it takes its wear and tear and its toll on a quarterback. Yeah, you can see how slowly he's getting up. And Nate Harris has played outstanding from that middle linebacker position of reading. He, I mean, he's going wherever Grothy is to take it away. And you're right, Mike, when you have four or five of those big guys hitting you, it makes it tough for your quarterback. He's a young guy, hadn't played as long a college season as, you know, in high school and maybe has played long seasons, but not against big, fast, strong players. Harry Douglas is back deep for Louisville. There's that rugby line drive punt. And we go to Sports Center U Studio and an up call. Mike, there's a lot going on tonight, and we'll give you all the latest coming up at halftime. But here's Virginia Tech and Wake, already 7-3. This is Sean Glennon to Josh Morgan. Loses one guy, gets a hug from another one, and then scampers all the way into the end zone for the score. Virginia Tech is rolling. By the way, USC just got an interception from Nate Longshore. The very next play on the two-yard line was a safety. And that's the bottom of the third. Big time catch by Gary Barnage. Catch and yards after the catch. Well, Mike, he's averaging 17.1 yards a catch. 
and the reason why they're so worried about Harry Douglas and Mario Urrutia, but he's going to come and drag across the field. Now, Brian Brown waits the last possible second to throw him the football. He has a defender chasing him all the way across Jeremy Burnett and can't keep up with him. A great job of, of providing some initial protection there, and now Brown has to run out of bounds with it. Well, good heads up play trying to stop that clock to preserve any timeouts that you have. They have, I think, two left, or three actually, but also wants to stop the clock because they feel like they can score. Yeah, Louisville has all three, South Florida with two. So that timeout, they don't have to use it if he didn't get out of bounds. 116 on the clock. Brahms numbers on the evening. Slow start 0 for 4, but he's coming on strong now. They try to set up the screen pass. Great recognition on the part of Stephen Nicholas. Now they'll call the timeout. Yeah, they have to after that. Stephen Nicholas is right there. <laughs> oh, man. You know, talk about these linebackers for, for South Florida. They just read and play and react so well. Well, coming up at halftime on SportsCenter U with Mike Call, a classic in Columbus. Boy, what a great game it was between Michigan and Ohio State. Who deserves to play for the title? And can Rutgers remain unbeaten? Those stories and more with Mike Hall and Tom Luganville, and Steve Israel, from our Sports Center Youth Studios. The Big East, of course, one of two conferences with three teams in the BCS top 10. The other conference, of course, being the Big Ten Conference with Ohio State, Michigan, and uh, Wisconsin, which ends its regular season at 11 and one and it was a it was a quiet it's quite 11 yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. nobody talked about the Badgers this year not at all and they ended the season so strong last year winning the the Capital One Bowl I mean with an outstanding fashion against Auburn and, and, and they never got any recognition they, you know, they didn't play great but they won they just found ways to win well, Bobby Petrino, his Louisville Cardinals have found ways to win all season long with the exception of that Rutgers game. They lead 7-0 here with a minute and eight to go before halftime. They face a third and nine. Brian ba Brahms got time, but he had a hand in his face. Number 95, George Selby was there. He was looking for his tight end, Barnett, Gary Barnage. Well, anytime you need someone to, to apply pressure from the defensive line perspective, it always seems to be George Selby. And, and that was a great play by him of not allowing Brian Brown to step up and throw the football and forcing Louisville now to kick a field goal. This is Art Carmody. He's going to be attempting a 47-yarder. He has made 14 in a row, and he has hit 29 of his last 30 field goal attempts. This from 47, it's up, and it's good. Make that 15 in a row. Art Carmody getting it done for the cards. And talk about a, yeah. a big momentum I mean, to carry was, into halftime. And, and perfect snap, good hole, good kick. And that's what you need. A lot of people don't pay attention to the snapper. The holder. Every, watch every, watch Harry <laughs> Douglas just spin that ball perfectly. <laughs> Boom. It's unusual, too, to see a receiver. Normally you have, it's not unusual, but more times than not, you have a quarterback holding. But Harry Douglas, you're right, gets the ball down perfectly. And that's just, it, it, that's why he's able to kick so effectively. Art Carmody, the leading scorer on this Louisville team. He's now has 89 points for the season. Again, he has now made 30 of his last 31 field goals, and he's hit 15 in a row after that 47-yarder. Let's give Dane Mattingly a little credit. I mean, normally you don't talk about a long snapper, but when you're going that well, you have to have all those things come into play. Snap, hole, and kick. Todd Flannery will kick off here for Louisville and back deep Taurus Johnson and Ian Randolph for South Florida. The Bulls trail 10-0 here with 58 ticks left on the clock before halftime. You can't give up on either one of these guys. Great return, man. You got to cover well if you're Louisville. Johnson gets the ball across the 15, past the 20, and finally brought down. Number 23, Stephen Garr, and Lamar Miles, number 22. And Mike, the biggest problem if you're South Florida now is you have to throw every down here, and this Louisville defense has come with some great calls and getting pressure on the young quarterback. Let's 
see the yardage difference there. Now Louisville is starting to pull away, especially after that last drive. Carmody with that last field goal set a school record for most in the season with 16. That ball almost picked off. G Gavin Smart. Woo. Man, you talk about breaking on the ball. And there's a lot, I mean, we, we keep saying there's a lot of Floridians here. Howard Snellenberger and, and Gavin Smart is right there. But look at this. He, he broke, shows you where he's going to throw. And Gavin Smart, the senior out of Lakeland, Florida, ran that route perfectly. <laughs> I mean, he ran it as well as the receiver did. Second and 10. South Florida elects to keep it on the ground, and they'll probably let the uh, clock run out. It only, ben, ben Williams tackled by Malik Jackson. And, and the only good thing now is that if you're South Florida, you get the ball coming back out. So uh, I think they're going to let this clock go down. Ben Williams is a walk-on. And... You know, Coach Levitt said, hey, I'm going to give him a scholarship. He hadn't gotten one yet, but he's a starter and was a walk-on to start this season, Mike. It's a great story. So he posed the question, would Louisville be able to respond after losing nine days ago to Rutgers? The answer not necessarily definitive, but so far so good. Louisville leads 10-0, and we go to Mike Hall at SportsCenter U. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Tom Luganville, Steve Israel joining me. Coming into this day, we had four undefeated teams. Now, we knew we'd be down to three because Michigan and Ohio State were playing each other. But I don't think anybody thought we'd be down to two, especially with Rutgers taking on Cincinnati. But since he's known to have a pretty good defense, and there's Bradley Gladauer taking up the middle for a good run. Nick Davila with the throw and the grab by Derek Stewart. It's first and goal. Davila is the backup QB, mind you. Looking, looking, looking. Somebody get open. Fine, I'll take it myself. 10 nothing. the Cats of Bears. Mike Teal in trouble, Tommy. Mike Teal never throw the ball off the back foot to the outside. This is what you're asking for. D'Angelo Smith is G-O-N and gone. 83 yards for the score. And Izzy, look at this score. Greg Schiano not too happy because it's 17 to 3, almost done with the first half. Yeah, you have to give credit to defense the coordinator for since he pat the no Every day you play to be the best. It is halftime here at uh, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Louisville throwing the shutout at South Florida, leading 10 0. Mike Adamley alongside of Charles Arbuckle here at Papa John Stadium. And we talked about the two quarterbacks. And it took Brian Brom a while to a few series to figure out what the South Florida defense was doing. But once he did, he was able to get it done. Mike, it takes a while when you've been off. And I think that's really the key with Brian Brown. Once he started feeling more comfortable, he was really able to get the ball to a lot of different receivers. And that's really the key for this Louisville offense. For them to be effective, they like to throw the football around and really get it into different people's hands and to make plays. They are leading the country in the least, the, the number of drives under two minutes on the year. And they really didn't have that tonight, but they spread the ball around and they started making long drives pay off for them. And I think that's what you have to have if you're a Louisville team coming back trying to figure it out. Here's a quarterback comparison. Brom completing 61% of his passes for 135 yards tonight. And the touchdown pass to Harry Douglas. And you can see the struggle that Grothy is enduring tonight. Just 42% completion percentage and just 89 yards of passing offense. So the second half about to get underway. Louisville will kick off. Taurus Johnson and Ian Randolph back deep to accept Todd Flannery's kick. Johnson downs in his end zone and South Florida will begin their first second half possession at their own 20 yard line. What does South Florida have to do offensively, Charles, to get back into this football game? They have to go back to what works for them. I haven't seen many reverses from them. I haven't seen the running game like we saw that one little stretch where Ricky Ponton and Matt Grothy were doing a very good job, and they have to get that going. The Remington first half stats, uh, take a look. Louisville totally dominant across the board. And the big story, Grothy sacked four times tonight. And Louisville averaging 8.2 yards on the first downs. South Florida 3.7. Grothy swings it out to Ian Randolph. 
He had it going before Brandon Sharp knocked him out of bounds of first down South Florida. Well, you know, this guy, we talked about Ian Randolph being one of those people that you have to have at the wide receiver position to make people miss. Well, great blocking up front. He has some guys in front of him doing a good job of helping him get down. S.J. Green, one of them. But he is so effective on, on air. Grothy going into the night was also South Florida's leading rusher, but tonight negative yardage, minus five on the night. Ricky Ponton, or Benjamin Williams, number 30, the other back in South Florida's offensive attack. Gains about three before Nate Harris brings him down. You want to take him away, and they're doing a very good job, Louisville. Is. They have Nate Harris kind of spying them, Brandon Sharp. They have a bunch of different guys, defensive linemen even. We've seen Peanut Whitehead being very effective. Zach Anderson, they, they've really been constant and consistent after staying after Matt Grothy. And Grothy, a young man coming off a school record of 364 yards passing and two touchdowns last week. Here's the trickeration on the part of South Florida. Flags are down on the play. This is Taurus Johnson, and they're going to bring this one back. Mark Dial, a big, big 78, was in no man's land for a big guy. Left tackle is going to get blocking in the back. You know, he was caught against a smaller defender. And when you're 6'4", 310, it's hard to move your body around, and that's he gets caught there. You saw Jim Levitt there going, <laughs> use your head, use your head, come on! Well, it, it, you can't beat yourself, and we, we talked about getting the reverses going. Look at all the Louisville defenders are going one way, and now you come back, and this is a perfect setup. You see Big 78 right there hitting Malik Jackson. Now, Malik Jackson does a great job of staying in position, and you can't block him. Try, try to go inside to block him, but the bigger guys can't make those adjustments as quick. There are actually a couple of blocks in the back yeah. on that last play. Grothy now on second down and 20. In and out of the arms. Chris Vaughn, number, or excuse me. Cedric, Cedric Hill, number nine. Great throw by Grothy. And hits him right in the worst place to hand. Cedric Hill, the tight end. You don't call the tight end's name a lot in this offense, but he was there. Has to come up with that. Third and 18, and uh, South Florida just two of eight on third down conversions tonight. See if Grothy can make anything happen for this Bulls offense. He had a man open, but only momentarily. Marcus Edwards, number 11. Marcus Edwards really didn't want to catch that ball. Brandon Sharp has been flying around. And at the very last second, Marcus Edwards pulls his hands back. <laughs> Brandon Sharp, instead of going after him, goes after the football. Their Trent Guy is back deep, along with Harry Douglas, number 85, is Justin Tichy. Punts for the fifth time tonight. And, th and there's that rugby punt again. It doesn't look pretty, but it gets the job done as it rolls down inside the 29-yard line at the 28, and that's where Louisville will begin their next possession after the punt of 41 yards. College basketball on ESPNU comes your way tomorrow night as the Old Miss Rebels out of the Southeastern Conference head to Jim Calhoun's house to take on number 19 Connecticut Huskies of the Big East. College basketball on ESPNU tomorrow at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. We are College Sports. You think Jim is going to give him a good home cooked meal? What <laughs> <laughs> <Not> a chance. <laughs> Nice ball fake by Brom. And he's got his tight end. Gary Barnage. Really getting Barnage involved in the offense tonight. I mean, they use him 16 catches on the year. 
one touchdown, but he's been very effective. And it's the ball faking that's doing such a good job because what it does, it pulls the linebackers over. They want to react, and then linebackers usually cover tight ends. If they're not there, they make big catches. This time, Louisville elects to keep the ball on the ground. Anthony Allen, the ball carrier. And the other thing that the ball fake does, Mike, it holds the safeties just enough to create space, especially on corner routes. They have to run from the middle of the field sometimes or by the hashes. And the linebackers, if they get pulled over, there's no one there. And Gary Barnage has been running free because these linebackers read very good keys, but the way you beat them is that you make them read something and then take it away. Brahm on the night, 12 of 19, 161 yards, facing a second and eight here. Again, the play action fake, and again, a man wide open, and it's Mario Yerudia. The local product. Bumped out of bounds by Jerry Burnett, Jeremy Burnett, but not before Yerudia picks up the first down. The Trey Williams was there. He slipped on the play. But even if he hadn't, I think Yerudia would have still been open. Rom is showing you why he is such a highly touted prospect with the strong arm the kid out of Louisville Trenton High Trinity High School excuse me empty backfield now they had a wide open receiver there was Colby Smith went in motion and the linebacker they had actually had George Selvey trying to cover and he was covering the receiver and it was a mix-up because there was a receiver outside, receiver inside, Colby Smith outside, and he's just shaking his head because it would have been six. You know, Ben Moffat was blitzing from his Mac linebacker yeah. position, and I'm sure Brom was worried more about him than, he, <laughs> than his receiver that was open. Second down and ten. There's, there's your man, yeah. Brock Bowen, number 32. I'm always going to tout for the full backs, the H backs, the tight end, especially when a guy is getting an opportunity and he's making the most of it. Yeah, he sure is. A, a transfer from the University of Illinois. But watch how the defense all moves over. And then Brock Bowling just comes in, starts that way, and then comes offline, meaning he starts down the line and sees that opening. Most big full backs can't do that. But at six foot 237, this guy has shown some good moves in his four carries. And he stays in the game as the tailback right now. And Brom trips on, looks like the, the back of the center was backing out and he tripped over the center's foot. You know, you don't think, you're surprised that that doesn't happen more often with the way the center snaps and. But it, it doesn't happen as watch he's gonna yep. get his foot stepped on or by, by, yeah, by the guard. The guard. Yeah, number 63 Danny Barlow. You know, usually the quarterback will take the blame on that but Barlow took a major step with his left foot. And got Brom. So second down and 13 ball sitting at the. South Florida 21 yard line. Louisville with a 10 nothing lead. And going for more. Harry Douglas, who's caught the one touchdown pass tonight, gets grabbed by the face mask as he's thrown out of bounds by Trey Williams. Well, I like how Brian Brom stood in the face of, of the pressure. He got hit very, very hard. And then Trey Williams is going to add insult to injury by the face mask. But Brian Brom stays in the pocket. He has tremendous pressure on him there in the shotgun. Has a little bit more time, but you're going to see it come right in his face. Josh Julmus is there, and then on the tail end, I mean, he's going to get hit. Stays there, makes a nice throw, and Harry Douglas is finding room, and that's a major face mask penalty by Trey Williams. I mean, that's that's how you can get hurt there. So it gives Louisville and Brian Brahma first and goal from the 10-yard line. I'm wondering the way Louisville came out if. Bobby Petrino didn't tell him about the Rutgers score at halftime. <laughs> Anthony Allen. Well, the line judge is going to say he's down at the one foot line. <laughs> he comes in and makes the spot. But Anthony Allen, an awful close, 
But just good power running game now if you're Louisville. You come off zone blocking, you give him a chance, he stretches the play, and then he hits his own man and falls down right at that one-inch line. I mean, this is good blocking by the Lord for defenders. No pressure whatsoever. The only person that tackles him is his man. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Second and goal. Scott Kuhn, the man in motion, the extra tight end. They give it to Allen. He's got the touchdown. Number nine on the season. This is where they really like to get big, so to speak. Deriante Taylor at the fullback and then Anthony Allen. He took a shot low, and it looked like he's, he's limping right there, Mike, but nine touchdowns now in the season. Well, ever since Michael Bush had to leave the lineup and for the season with that broken leg suffered against Kentucky, it's been tailback by committee. They've had Colby Smith, George Stripling, and Anthony Allen all run the football tonight. Our comedy on to kick the extra point. It is up. It is good. And with 10.06 remaining here in the third quarter of play, Louisville has a 17-0 lead over the South Florida Bulls in this Big East matchup. Fable Churchill Downs. But the race here is all about the race in the Big East. And right now, Louisville with a 17-0 lead over South Florida. After that last scoring drive, nine plays, 72 yards, eating up three minutes and 14 seconds on the clock. Mike, I, I really think South Florida now has to answer. I mean, you, know, you get too far in the hole against this Louisville team, you know, they're going to just run the football, take a lot of time off the clock. South Florida has not been very effective at getting third downs or getting first down plays. That last drive, they did a good job and installed. Todd Flannery will kick off for Louisville. Taurus Johnson and Ian Randolph back deep again for South Florida. Flannery's kick taken by Johnson at his two. And a nice open field special teams tackle by Lamar Miles, number 22. And we go to Mike Hall in the studio for a sports and are you in game update. And another update on another top 10 team. That would be USC against Cal. Up 6-2 thanks to that funky safety, but there's a catch from Lavelle Hawkins from Nate Longshore, making up for a pick earlier. 9 of 17 so far. Cal has a 9-6 lead. And Wake Forest, another surprising team this season, is in trouble. Down 24-6, Mike. All right, thanks, Mike. So Wake Forest, who we were really impressed with last week, and now Rutgers, both those teams on the ropes. Mm. You better play every week. <laughs> Rothy out the, that little quick wide receiver screen to Amari Jackson, number 18. That's how they open up their last drive, and that was successful. Amari Jackson really gets going for a big receiver. He's fast. You know, it doesn't look at it, but it's, it's deceiving. We saw that last year, pulling away from guys. You know, the other thing that he's done this year, he's and, and he did it last year as well, and he throws the football. He's two yes. for two. But Louisville has done a very good job of not allowing him to make the, the huge plays that he made last year. They shut him down on third down, and, all, and you're right. They No special team big plays, no big plays on offense, basically nothing. This is Ponton back in the game, number five, Ricky Ponton. Zach Anderson, we've called his name yeah. all night long. Well, when you have defensive linemen that'll make plays for Anderson. you like that, he only came in the year with 20 tackles. But his coach must have told him, Zach, I need you to really step up today. Mike Cassidy and his group have said, we need the defensive front to play as well as they ever have in a game like this, and you can see why. He's flying around the football, and it, the front four are setting the tempo. South Florida rushing tonight just 44 yards on the season, 158. Grothy has accounted for a lot of that tonight, but he's been shut down as well, except on broken plays like that one. That was good enough to pick up the first down. Zach Anderson again from his tackle, defensive tackle position, or end position rather, bringing him down. He's all over the field tonight, Charles. Well, he really is. He is having an outstanding game. And, and I think it's just coming from hustle. It's nothing, no special formula. He's beating his guy, or he's just hustling to make the play, tracking plays down. 
Cardinals have doubled the Bulls in first downs tonight, 14 to 7. Ricky Ponton, a nice piece of running for a gain of about six. The reverse will hold that end man on the line, and I think that's why you can see Ricky Ponton coming off and getting a chance. Peanut Whitehead goes across the line of scrimmage, and he has to hold and wait to see if the reverse is going to come his way. And Levitt trying to coach him up on the sidelines. Hey, we're not out of this yet. Second down and four. Grothy again working on the shotgun and getting run down from behind. And the first man to hit him. How about it? Number 96, Zach Anderson. <laughs> Oh, the folks in Baymanette. We're going to call Alabama. him Sack Anderson yeah. after that one. The folks in Baymanette, Alabama have to be happy with the way he's playing tonight. He's going to come from the left side of your screen and just beat his man, Mark Dow. Mark Dow never gets his feet set. First of all, he just opens, turns, and just opens the, the, the fence, so to speak, and allows Zach Anderson to get there. Fourth sack tonight by Louisville, third and nine for South Florida. Grothy steps up in the pocket. There's another case of the man not wanting the football. Incomplete pass. John Russell had himself a pick, but I do believe Taurus Johnson gave up on the route. And, and Jim Levitz is on the field. He wants Taurus Johnson because that's the second time we've seen their receivers Give up on routes. Watch it. He yeah, wants no part of that. He stops. He doesn't go. I mean, he just plays it like, hey, it's not there. And fortunately for uh, South Florida, it doesn't come up with a pick. It, it doesn't. It's not a pick. But Taurus Johnson has to go and make a play on the ball. You can't just run up the field if you're a receiver and allow your quarterback to get picked off. He, there's no excuse for that as a receiver. Go up and make a play, knock the ball away. Even if you don't have a chance at it, don't allow the defender to come up with it. Well, you, you don't know that you don't have a chance if you don't go for it. Justin Tichy will have to punt on fourth down instead. Well, Louisville definitely has the swagger and the confidence back now. Well, they're, they're picking it up, and the fans yeah. sense it as well. This is exactly what they needed after waiting nine days following the agonizing loss to Rutgers that knocked them from the ranks of the unbeaten. And what about this great facility also? I mean, it's just, you know, you just look here and, and you know, look at an awesome stadium, just the, the, the fans that come out, 43,000, very intimate stadium, but very loud. And when they get going, it's hard to stop them. going after their 17th straight home win here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Second longest streak in the country next to USC's, USC's 31. Spillman and Trent Guy and Harry Douglas are back deep. Harry Douglas is calling for it. He's got it. Gets some wiggle room and gets it out across the 50-yard line. Tackled by Brandon Pegues. A punt of 28 yards, an eight yard return for Harry Douglas. Louisville leads by 17. Temperatures dipping around the freezing mark, about 32 degrees, and uh, it's kind of taken the, a little bit of the starch out of the Louisville fans who aren't used to that, but they're, they're here in force here in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium where their home team has done extremely well. There's where Louisville sits. They've won 16 straight here. Southern Cal at the Coliseum has won 31 straight. That may be in jeopardy tonight as California leads them. Well, Cal is in a position to beat USC, but South Florida has to make a play in order to come back and have any chance here against Louisville. And Gary Barnage was in a position to catch a pass from Brian Brom. The problem was that the ball was thrown a little bit behind him, and he was going away from it. Well, they've used him on the edges, so to speak, corner routes and drag routes. And that time, he was wide open down the seam, a little bit too high. Second down and 10, empty backfield for the Cardinals. Spreading the field out. No, not an empty backfield. Excuse me. 
to our old friend Colby Smith. One of a troika of running backs that the Cards have used tonight. Alan Cray takes him down, number 94. You teased about Brock Bolin having a 6.8 yard to carry average, or Colby Smith can go at about 5.4 yards a clip. You see those first three drives? That's rustiness, that's losing the Rutgers, and that's all those other things. Well, for some reason, after that, those last five drives, they made amends for it. And they look like the Louisville that we've been accustomed to seeing all season long until that fateful Thursday night against the Knights. Third down and four. Smith, incidentally, Colby Smith, four carries, 31 yards. And he remains in the ball game. This time picking up the blitz. The ball intended for Gary Barnage, the tight end, broken up nicely by number 21, Trey Williams. Trey Williams makes a play on the ball. Both he and Mike Jenkins do a very good job of breaking up the balls, uh, the passes that come that way. Trey Williams, six interceptions on the year, and you can see why. He's always around the football, and that gives you a chance to make a play on it. Corey Getchy punting for the first time in the second half for Louisville. Ian Randolph will just let this one go. Boy, it takes a nice bounce. Wow, oh, that was lucky. Yeah, that was that was that <laughs> golfer's wedge shot into the green. You know, nice spin. That was very close to going out of the one-inch line. And you see this more often on the field turf now. Yeah, you do. Louisville with a 17-0 lead for their coach Bobby Petrino, but he wants more. Call with another update on Rutgers and Cincinnati. This is Butler Benton getting a 62-yard gain on this little screen pass. Brings it all the way down inside the five-yard line. Someone would tackle him eventually. There you see. And then Mike Charles, watch this. On third and goal, Debron Thompson. Oh, look at the timing. Gets the sack, forces only a field goal since he's still up 20-3. to All right, thanks, Mike. And for your edification, uh, they announced that here in Papa John Stadium, and the crowd went berserk. South Florida trailing 17-0 to the Louisville Cardinals, starting to look like their old selves again. Let's take a look at the Big East standings coming into tonight. Rutgers 9-0 overall, undefeated in the Big East as well. Obviously, Louisville would be the beneficiary of a Rutgers loss. Rutgers still has to play West Virginia at the end of the season as well. And then talking to the Rutgers, I mean, the, excuse me, the Louisville coaches, they were just so upset with how close they were to winning that game, being up 25-7, allowing Rutgers to come back and make a run on them in the second half. Getting shut out in the second half, which hasn't happened to them in a long time. First, first down, and Zach Anderson has been in the South Florida backfield more than their running backs have. Well, you got to block him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plain and simple. If you don't block him, he's going to make a play. And normally we say linebackers with all the tackles, but Zach Anderson has to be close to double digits in tackles. Well, he's playing against a guy who's 310, and, and Zach is using his speed and quickness to, to beat Mark Dial a, a lot at that uh, key matchup position tonight. And he's playing on both sides as well. They're flipping him. Look out. Grothy thrown away a prayer. Amobi Okoye, the first to, to reach the young quarterback. Uh, this is a heads-up play by Grothy. He's going to have Okoye coming at him right there, and he just stops and fires it. And fortunately for him, he's able to get rid of it. But that Louisville defensive front has really play, played well. Even when they've come with some dogs and blitzes, maybe one extra guy, it has not allowed him to get a chance to feel comfortable. Louisville hadn't been great on third down, but South Florida hadn't been either. South Florida just three of 11 on third down conversions tonight. They face a third and 12 here. Grothy thrown behind the receiver. S.J. Green, number 81. But, you know, South Florida receivers have a tendency to do that, though. We, we talked to their coaches, and last year they talked about this leading into the game. 
Those guys sometimes won't make plays when you need them to, and that wasn't a great throw. But we've seen a few times where guys have given up on routes. Lawrence Dossey right there, former Florida State receiver, a great receiver in his own right. Jim Levitt is talking to him right there, and they got to be saying, we need to find a guy that can catch the football. Justin Tichy punting for the sixth time tonight. He's going to do that rugby-style punt. Guarantees no return, but you don't get much distance on it either. And it... So who's going to win the Big East, you ask? Well, here's a look at the schedules down the stretch. After tonight, Louisville's got a game at Heinz Field against the Panthers of Pittsburgh and then UConn to wrap up the season here. West Virginia's got South Florida and then the big date with Rutgers and there you saw Rutgers schedule. A lot of football left to be played Mike. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I told you they would go into that big backfield set with Anthony Allen and try to run some clock. And they come out with the big package, and you know, that's when they usually want to shorten the game up a little bit. New clock rules help them, but also when you have a big 17-0 lead, it makes it look even more than that. Brahms numbers on the night uh, efficient, if not spectacular. This time, uh, Colby Smith tackled in his own backfield. Chris Robinson from his defensive end position. You know, the, the, the biggest thing about Louisville, when you watch them over the last few years, is their efficiency on offense and also their big playability. Uh, we haven't seen as many big plays tonight, but they've been very, very workmanlike, methodical in how they've worked tonight. Two of eight on third down. Brom operating out of the shotgun on third and eight here. Steps up nice in the pocket. That was sweet. Harry Douglas, the receiver, but a flag on the play. That was a very nice throw by Brom. Good catch by Harry Douglas. You know, made himself available and, and was able to give Brom a very good target on the dig route or a deep end. But that's going to come back. Pass interference, 82 offense, locking downfield before the pass. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Replay third down. John McDay, tonight's referee. That's a big penalty. And after such a nice catch, getting the first down, you lose 15 from the, the line of scrimmage where you just threw the football. That's a long way to go for Louisville now. So <laughs> Brian's looking over to his coach. We don't, do, we have, do, we do we have, have a third and 23 play? Well, well actually third and 25 because I want to make sure I pick up the first down. Give me a little change on that. <laughs> well, let's see if it's in Louisville's playbook. Third down and 23. They're going to call timeout <laughs> upon further review. We, we may to need to discuss things here. Yeah, stranger things have happened though. You know, they, they may have that play. They got it somewhere. They're going to look for it in the in the football office. <laughs> and while they take this time out, we're going to join Mike Hall in the Sports Center U studio. Mike, here with Tom Lutenbill to bring you the latest update, Louisville fans. Watch this: Rutgers and Cincinnati. It's already 20 to three when Brent Selick. My goodness, Magnum. 83 yards for Selleck, mustache and all, brings it in and they are reviewing it officially, but if it stands, 26 to three, Mike. Cincinnati, this yeah. is, I, 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 would, I would, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. No. Cincinnati's a good team at home. Yeah, they are, and, and I think the other thing is, we talked about Louisville being so despondent and upset after losing. When you're Rutgers, what about everybody in the country? We've seen the USA Today talk about them. 
everyone now knows the Rutgers story. And when that happens, you get an X on your on your chest. I mean, they were they were flying a little bit under the radar screen until they beat Louisville, but it just really came out. And they had nine days to read the press clippings and let everybody tell them, hey, you guys are great. And when you do that in football, somebody's going to come and knock you in the mouth. And that's what Cincinnati is doing. Cincinnati, a, a very, very sound football team. Saw them earlier in the year play Ohio State and played them fairly tough. Brom rolling to his right, right and going for Harry Douglas is wide open. Over his right shoulder, one foot in bounds. First down Louisville. Mike, I'm going to tell you how difficult that is to make. The, you talk about the shoulder lean. Well, well, that's a receiver doing it very well right there. I mean, this is excellent blocking, good play fake by Brom. But the receiver here makes his quarterback look good. You talk about that new song, the shoulder lean. Well, if you're a receiver, I mean, you reach out, you catch the ball, you keep your feet down. Great job by Harry Douglas. Look at this. One foot almost gets the second one in. A gain of 40 yards on that pass from Brian Brown. And Douglas' numbers shoot up exponentially after that 40-yard catch. Five catches, 76 yards. Colby Smith gets loose. We may have another face mask penalty. Well, and this offense, look how much tempo they have after that big play. They get to the line of scrimmage, and they come after you. It's a whole different Louisville ball club now. If you're South Florida, you better call a timeout. You better come with a, a blitz because your guys are really Six getting pushed station. around. Number 17 on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, Louisville. Free safety, safety Danny Verpale, guilty of the infraction. We bumped into a few South Florida fans, and they said the same thing. They don't play well when it gets to 40 degrees, 30 degrees, and we're seeing a little bit of that tonight. Mike. Well, you look at the, you look at their uh, too deep. There's only one player from another state. He's from Georgia. But hey, the guys <laughs> from Louisville, they're, a lot of them are from Florida, and they come up here and they do well in it. <laughs> they practice yeah, every they're day. Here, they're here. They have that big indoor facility. They don't <laughs> practice outside anymore. <laughs> now, I know about practicing in the Midwest when I played with the Colts, and that cold air would come off. You know, those westerly storms would come in. They have a nice little indoor facility right over across the way they don't in lati this. latitude wise <laughs> yeah. Louisville is about the same as Indianapolis yes, I-65 yes. runs across from straight through yep. yeah and those storms out west that just blow in on you Woo. Charles the Colts played in the dome didn't they? Right? yeah but we practice outside yeah, <laughs> we didn't right. have an indoor stadium Get out of town, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Barnage the man in motion they fake running to that side. Anthony Allen in South Florida was all over that one. Steven Nicholas. Steven Nicholas. Yeah. Their best defensive player, no question. Well, he had seven brothers. And his dad was a Pop Warner football coach. And, I mean, you know, he is just one of those guys that was meant to play football. They said after church, the mom and, and dad wanted to clear the yard, but they tried to plant flowers and it, with eight boys. Imagine, you got four on four. Steven was in there and he's roughing it up with their older brothers. <laughs> Good chance we'll be seeing him play on Sundays, that's for sure. Seventh play of this Louisville drive, third and goal. Brom looking underneath Harry Douglas touchdown. They make it look so easy sometimes. Well, Harry Douglas only needed 267 yards to get to 1,000. He's really getting close after the night game and that's the same play he scored on in the first half coming underneath getting an opportunity now you should see Mario Yeruda come in and kind of he almost runs a pick but doesn't really have to they have two receivers that come on over the top he comes underneath and he's wide open on the other side And you saw all the offensive linemen touching hands that's yeah. because when it gets loud they want to all get off at the same snap count and this is the end of the end zone where it's really noisy because it's closed Seven play, 56 yard drive, the touchdown pass. South Florida, 12 men in formation. Penalty be half the distance to the goal line. Retry. And, and Mike, in the old days, you used to could get off the sideline, but now if you're within the numbers and they get ready to set the play, you're, it's substitution violation. And they did that because all the substitutions that you now see and all the packages you see, not only in the pro game, but in the college, college game, game as well, well, right? Yeah. 
Louisville's version new of Mr. Art Automatic, Art Carmody on to attempt the extra point. We've seen what he can do in the field goal department. Had a 47-yarder earlier tonight, and Carmody is good again. Louisville ranked 10th in the country, leading South Florida 24 to nothing with 37 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Papa John Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky, home of the Louisville Cardinals. I'm Mike Adamley alongside Charles Arbuckle. University of South Florida, as much as their program has improved, they still haven't had yes. the big win yet, the really big win. They had one last year against this team. And this is what I said, for them to move to the next level and get recognition outside the Big East and outside of Florida and Tampa, they have, to, you know, you had a, it was perfectly set up for them. You play Louisville at home where they're so effective, and then you play West Virginia. That was an opportunity for them to find a way to win against two magnificent ball clubs in the Big East. And you can see Jim Levitt, he's put together a nice ball club, and they've done very well, but it's tough to win against opponents like this. When you're still fighting, recruiting, you're recruiting well, but you're still not quite to the level of a Louisville and some of the other Big East teams. Well, you gotta you gotta walk before you can run. Yeah, yeah. And it's they're still in that walk. They were crawling when they first yeah. started ten years ago. Now they're walking and they're running a little bit as well. But against teams like this, you're right, Charles. You but know, if, if somebody's gonna do it, it would be Jim this guy. Yeah, I mean, no question about it. You can just tell he's got a plan and he's putting it together very well. Went to a bowl game a year ago. We'll go to another one this year. They are already bowl eligible no matter what happens in the outcome of this game. And they have a retro freshman quarterback. And in Matt Grothy, a, a quarterback for the future. Well, you can see <laughs> what they've done this year. Started out on a three-game winning streak, and I think they got really excited about it. Not the great teams that you would see. Lost to Kansas and Rutgers back-to-back. -back. But look how close those games were. And then beating North Carolina, and then the last two weeks, Mike, they just played well after getting shelled by Cincinnati, who's doing the same thing. Yeah, the and they got shelled on a night in Cincinnati when I was talking to some South Florida fans that it was about the same temperature it yeah. is tonight. So that's the next label they'll have to shed that we can't play well in cold weather. Well, remember the Buccaneers had that label for a long time. Yeah. Well, there was a day that like a 20-game losing yeah. streak against the, uh, the Bears, where any time the weather, or the temperature Green was, was below 40 degrees. Yeah. yeah. Prime example. It becomes mental, you know, and it's Louisville. Uh, the other way. Let's think about them. How they have won at home because they have the mindset, we're going to win here. This is our house. You come here, you better be ready. Holding. 89, offense. Kelly's declined. Second down. They're Jim Levitt's team coming off of wins uh, against Pittsburgh and Syracuse the last two weeks. Figures he's got a great game plan coming in here to play against Louisville. And then you see it all go up in smoke, and now it's the pretty close to the fourth quarter your team's getting shit out and you just all you can do is shake your head well and we said this when they had a drive they had a, the first three drives when Louisville wasn't playing well that was their best opportunity and I think they are letting it slip away as, as more and more possessions go the crowd here at Papa John's Cardinal Stev Stadium enjoys it 24 nothing Louisville heading into the fourth quarter The last time we saw these three guys, their coats were open. Well, it's the start of the fourth quarter. Louisville's put the big freeze on South Florida, 24 nothing, and the guys have buttoned up. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit chilly out there. Certainly Louisville's defense has put South Florida on ice. Malik Jackson, number 11, buries quarterback Matt Grothy. Well, you might as well say Malik and his buddies. Zach Anderson was there. It was a race to see who could get that sack. Okoye, Zach Anderson, and Malik Jackson is going to get credit for it, but a lot of other guys were there. No blocking whatsoever by that offensive front by South Florida. Yeah, they got manhandled that time. You've got to have a little bit more heart if you're South Florida's offensive line. They have not protected well.
for Matt Grothy in the second half. Third down and 20, and this is not the place to be at your own nine-yard line. This time, however, Louisville dropping back in coverage. They'll let the underneath group go. That's one that Taurus Johnson was a, wasn't about to drop. Well, and they, they put him in a position by that sack of not allowing that to be a long enough play to make a first down. Louisville kept everything in front of him, and now they get the ball back and may have a chance for a big return. Justin Tichy, for sure, one thing's for sure, he's getting a lot of practice from his putting position tonight. And they've got that odd alignment of protection as they go for that rugby style kick that's down one of the sidelines, a directional punt designed at staying away at keeping it away from dangerous return men like Harry Douglas. And he does the job there. Ball rolls dead at the Louisville. Oh, about 37 yard line, 44 yard punt. When we take a look at tonight's game summary, it's been all Louisville's rushing, total yards, third down conversion, sacks, you name it. Louisville's been dominant. Well, if you're, if you're a Louisville fan, you get accustomed to seeing 500 plus yards with the way this Petrino run offense is. I mean, they find ways to, to make you pay if you don't cover guys or if you leave people open or you have uh, not effective against the running game. Brom out to his favorite receiver tonight anyway. Barnage who breaks a tackle and shows he's got a little speed. Gary Barnage, junior out of Middleburg, Florida, finally brought down by Ryan Gilliam. Well, we talked about the offensive line kind of mailing it in. The defensive players have to tackle after this. Barnage, although he runs well after the catch, don't make him a hero making that 37 yard catch and run after catching it at about two yards. Now this, you got to tackle better than this. Look, players just running right by him, giving up. Everybody thinking someone else is going to make a play. Chris Robinson runs right by this play. He and Ryan Gilliam just run right by him. Jerry, Jeremy Burnett, the man who tried to undercut Burnage and couldn't. Mario Urrutia drops that pass. Trey Williams on the coverage. He's Trey Williams has played, played a really good game tonight. He really has. He's played Mario Urudia very well for a, a, a mismatch as far as size. He's done a very good job, but he's probably been the only one. Barnage has been open. Harry Douglas. Everybody else has stepped up and made plays. The tight end coming into tonight, just 273 yards of pass offense for him tonight. He's, he just went over the 100 yard mark after that long pass reception of 37 yards. Brock. Bolin back in the football game. But you know, Mike, that, that's a good point. And, and, and Paul Petrino did a very good job of game planning because he knows these linebackers like to make tackles. They're pretty good in coverage. But who, who normally covers the tight end? The linebackers are the strong safety. And, and all of those guys are heavy in the tackles. And they make plays in the secondary, but they're not as good at cover guys. And they've it, exploited that matchup tonight. Bolin, the fullback, still in the game. And soon to be member of the all Charles Arbuckle team if he isn't already <laughs> hey he just I just I lobbied for him and he, he got some plays <laughs> this time he's stayed in for met pass protection and the pass intended for Mario Urudia incomplete well and mentally I already, I already give the tight end plays in my mind I said they're gonna give him some plays and the fullback you got to throw him in there too because you know, usually you're, you're used to doing the wham blocks if you're the H-back or the tight end. You feel for those guys. They don't get many bones thrown their way. The if you can, <laughs> if you can do both, it's a bonus. Yeah. The Ariel, the Ari, Deontay Taylor has one rush this year. He got a touchdown on it. Replay third down. But he's not getting many runs. Big 47. You can't lobby for him. See, some guys you can lobby for if you see their stats. You say, okay, they'll give them a chance. But some guys, you can lobby all you this, want. Yeah, yeah, it won't matter. You're not getting in, and you're not carrying the football. You're getting in, but you're going to make Anthony <laughs> Allen's life good. He gets nine touchdowns, you get one. Third down and 14. Brom looking, 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 and behind the back. Harry Douglas looked like he was going to take it out, and decided to take it up. Yeah, and, and this is the play where tomorrow when they watch the film, They'll, they'll highlight this one because everything yeah. else has gone so bad. See, he's going to say, 
They're going to get on him about that. The guys are going to laugh at him. And look, he's upset. Because <laughs> he wants his guys to get off the field so they can quit kick. I think Bobby oh. Petrino. Yeah, he's on Harry Dunn. Yeah, he's yeah, right yeah, in his yeah. face. Yeah. Hey, he, he comes across as a nice, mild-mannered guy. But don't make him mad. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah, don't don't make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Charge timeout, South Florida. What do you that think? Second charge timeout of the half. Well, one thing for sure, I, Louisville will be happy that this week finally came and went, yeah. and now they can go back to the business. And that business, assuming that uh, Rutgers does not come back against Cincinnati tonight, is to somehow figure out how to r run the table for the rest of the year. It was November 9th, the ill-fated Thursday, and everything that could go wrong did go wrong in the second half. They were up 25-7. That's the damnable thing about it. But Rutgers came back. When there was a series of plays and opportunities that in, in this field goal attempt came after an offside penalty against Louisville, and the, and the field goal was missed. So it was just so many things that had to happen for Rutgers and they did that that particular night. Getchy trying to pooch kick it. Looking for that corner. And it goes out of bounds. Let's see where they spot this thing. At about the 10 yard line. So it's been all Louisville after a tough early series. Brian Brom and company leading 24 nothing. Mike Adamley alongside Charles Ar Arbuckle, who swore to me that when he played for the Indianapolis Colts that they practiced outdoors. Oh, they we did, did not. Yes, we did. He's wearing this heavy hey, leather coat because he can't handle 35 years. degrees. Hey, I've been in Charlotte for two years. I played there for, t I lived there for 12. So I know <laughs> about cold, buddy. Just because you're in Chicago or Evanston, he gives me a hard time. God. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, Louisville's given the University of South Florida a very hard time tonight. Especially their young quarterback, Matt Grothy. Now that time, the receiver went for the ball, Marcus Edwards, number 11. Coverage by Gavin Smart. Let's see what the call is here. Offensive or defensive pass interference. Well, if it goes against Gavin Smart, it would come because the receiver really made a concerted effort to go after the football. Pass interference. Defense. Number 27. See, and, and that's what I'm saying. From line of scrimmage, automatic first down. We saw that earlier, Mike. If you don't go make a play on the football, you give yourself no chance, and you give the quarterback a negative stat. Marcus Edwards is going to really try to get to this football, and Gavin Smart never makes a play on the football to the very end. He, he never knows where it is. So what you're saying is the receiver is always going to get the call. If he, if, if he makes a play on the ball and the, the defender doesn't, uh, doesn't, and he looks up at the last second, that's a penalty. He... Grothy up top again. Looking for number 81, S.J. Green. You know, you, you make an interesting point. Now, Grothy is so young in his development. These receivers have worked a lot with Julmas. Now, he's really going to help. Uh, once again, though, they, they quit on ball, on, re on receptions that they can have, or make a play on it. Don't stop. That's frustrating not only for your coaches and your teammates, but the quarterback as well. 376 yards of total offense, third in the Big East coming into tonight's game. Tonight, just 177. And look out. Although they were, it was by design, the screen and Ricky Ponton, all he needed was to break one more tackle and he might have gone to distance, finally brought down after a, a big gain by Rod Council. And, and buddy, I'm not saying that, you know, the, the, the passes have been perfect, but they never are. And if you got a guy trying to make a play, that was a nice play right there because the screen, all that pressure that was coming, I'm surprised we haven't seen that a little bit more tonight. Gain of 32 yards. Some fourth quarter signs of life on the port part of South Florida.
This one to Ian Randolph, a gain of six yards, tackled by Bobby Buchanan and a flag down. Looks like that might be face mask against Buchanan. Ian Randolph can make you miss. <laughs> if you blink, he's mm -hmm. gone. Yet after this call. Incidental face mask. Number 34 defense. Five yard penalty at the end of the run. Results in a first down. He had two punt returns for touchdowns called back against Florida International. Any event, he scored one. He also had a one uh, 70 yard TD reverse versus McNeese State call back. So <laughs> you talk about a guy that can can make some things happen when he gets in the open field. And as they tack on the additional yardage, the ball now at the Louisville 31-yard line. <laughs> Grothy hands it off to William Benjamin, who cuts it back and wiggles for about three yards before Brandon Cox brings him down, number 88. Mike, junior he, out of Atlanta, Georgia. Mike, you never want to question kids' hearts. But I like to see the fact now that South Florida is fighting back. I mean, for a while there, we saw them not playing with the intensity that we're accustomed to seeing them. And when you watch them on film, they fight to tooth and nail. But there were stretches in this game where their guys didn't give themselves the best chance in this ball game. Well, Grothy replaced a very popular quarterback in the incumbent starter, Pat Julmas who engineered last year's 45 to 14 victory. Here's the razzle dazzle, Amari Jackson. Can number 11 Mark Edwards come down with it? No. And Pat Julmist is one of the team captains and a very well-respected young man. Well, and, and you talk about Amari Jackson. He was two of two, 100%. After one pass, he dropped it down now to 66%, two out of three on the year. Almost, he almost comes up with that. That was great play by the Louisville, Louisville defenders of knocking it away. Ball hung up there quite a bit, too. South Florida has been absolutely abysmal on third down tonight. Just three of 13. They face a third and eight here. Grothy making sure everybody's got the snap count, and then eventually... Jim Levitz runs over to the line judge and calls the time. He's... Before the shot yeah. clock. Or shot clock. <laughs> Get, it is sort of like basketball season. Well, Game clock. Well, Freedom Hall right across exactly. the street. Exactly, <laughs> and they play today. Yeah. While Jim Levitt considers his options, we'll consider ours and take a break. Back after this. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. Earn rewards, points, in more ways than ever with City. And Remington Titanium Shavers. <laughs> University of South Florida faced with a third down and eight yards to go. 9.54 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter. Bulls trying to avert a shutout. Grothy in trouble. The sack man cometh, Zach Anderson. He gets my player of the game award. I got to give it to him. I, I, we, 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 I think we should have given it to him about two quarters ago. I mean, he has played an outstanding game tonight. I mean, he has just found a way to get to the quarterback, no matter who they put on him. It was Dial earlier. Now, that was Walter Walker. Neither of the tackles have played well tonight, but Zach Anderson has made him pay for that. You know, after a setback like the kind Louisville had against Rutgers nine days ago, coaches can only get into a player's mind so much. You ask them to step up, and you hope that they do. Zach Anderson has been one of those players. Here's the field goal attempt. No good by Delbert Alvarado. Who let just last week against Syracuse set a Big East record with a 56-yarder. Tonight, he's 0 for 2. Well, lace up your skates for college hockey action tomorrow on ESPNU. It all starts at 3 Eastern with a meeting between two of the nation's top-ranked teams as the seventh-ranked Boston College Eagles and the second-ranked Black Bears of Maine battle on the ice. College hockey on ESPNU tomorrow at 3 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. We are College Sports.
Brian Brom still in the ball game, get, handing off to Bolin. Brock Bolin tackled by Steven Nicholas, number 51. I'm surprised we haven't seen Hunter Cantwell, number 14, the backup quarterback. <laughs> Who started two games this season when Brian was had surgery on his right thumb. And actually played very well. Yeah, 44-69, five touchdowns. A long of 68, has a strong arm as well. I mean, one of those quarterbacks is sitting behind Brian Brom, learning his craft while he's not getting a chance to play a lot, but when he does, he seems to play very well. Engineered wins over Kansas State, Middle Tennessee State. Harry Douglas, there's another guy who could get off this, uh, player of the game honors, yeah. at least offensive player of the game honors. We can give a co-player of the game. <laughs> I'll tell you, those Zach Anderson and Harry Douglas have been real big factors today, tonight. So the Big East is going to come down to the final weeks. And Louisville will be in the mix, that's for sure. Boy, Brian. Headed for the house. Yeah, he came <laughs> awful close <laughs> to giving that on, got away. You know, Brian Brom is an interesting story, too, because with the legacy here of his brothers and his family, you know, he had some opportunities to go other places, Tennessee and Notre Dame. I, I don't think his family wanted that to happen, but when you're being recruited by some big-time programs, which all of his family had been as well, they were good players in their own right, he had a nice opportunity to go to another program and chose here, and you can see the results there. Well, there's a special the love relationship the Brom family has with the University of Louisville, that's for sure. And four Brahms have been in the family, including his brother Jeff, who's the quarterback coach, a 40-yard punt. 7.24 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Cardinals lead by 24. Twenty-four-nothing Louisville, 10th ranked in the country, and we talked about quarterback Brian Brom. Well, Here's the man who started the whole quarterback tradition here at the University of Louisville, the great Johnny Unitas, number 19, the Baltimore Colts. One of the first people in football to just have Johnny U. You don't even have to say the last name. Uh, you know, most movie stars or entertainers have that. Johnny U was the first one in pro sports that I know of to have that kind of moniker. One of the all-time greats, and we head to Mike Hall in the studio for a Sports Center U in-game update. Michael. It is a close one out west, guys. Cal USC, this is David Mueller. Mueller, the 49-yard field goal. They brought him in. He's the long kicker. That helps tie it up at nine. And, of course, the news earlier in the day, Ohio State took down Michigan. Thanks, Mike. Uh, back here, it has been all Louisville, 24 nothing here with 6.40 remaining in the fourth and final quarter. Cardinals getting back on track after being upset by Rutgers nine days ago. The numbers on young Matt Grothy, one of the surprise stories this year in the Big East Conference, the freshman. Has had all kinds of problems and it's not just his fault. This Louisville team has brought the pressure and brought the heat. And Cedric Hill, number nine, the receiver on that pass. Well, and you talk about bringing the heat, and it, it, it makes sense, especially if you're Louisville, to have big games like this guy right here, Zach Anderson. You know, and, and they're not bringing as much pressure every single play. They're just beating four on five, or sometimes three on five. Well, they dropped eight men back in coverage that time. And that was three guys there, and they still get pressure by Zach Anderson. Listen, yep. <laughs> I mean, he... Nobody can handle him tonight. <laughs> Six sacks tonight. Last, last week, it was South Florida that was doing the sacking. Yeah. They sacked Syracuse. 
seven times. Well, and, and, and they didn't allow a sack versus Syracuse, who, who were ninth in the NCAA in sacks. But today, tonight, it's been a totally different ball game with this Louisville rush. They fake the handoff to Williams. Grothy going deep. Got his man. Amp Hill, number six, touchdown, South Florida. They're on the scoreboard. Well, that was a nice throw by Grothy, and they finally caught Louisville in a coverage where they could capitalize on that skinny post. You know, Grothy has a strong enough arm, but the skinny post, you see the play action pass. You see Nate Harris 10 going in on the delayed blitz. But what happens is the defender stops. Bobby Buchanan, if he keeps running, maybe he has a chance, but Grothy put it right in the perfect spot for Amp Hill. So a five yard play, 73 yards, five yard, 73 yards, and this touchdown pass of 44 yards to Amp. And they went for two and got it. Is complete to number 82. Ben Busby. Back up tight end. But too little, too late for the South Florida Bulls. Well, those were the plays that you needed in the first half when you had a chance when Louisville wasn't really quite there. They were still kind of sleepwalking, a little foggy from last, the last time they had played. There's Inspector Gadget with the, well, he got like the ball. Matthew Broderick there with the Bulls. <laughs> there he is. Hey, he's got to have some to cheer about too, you know. I want one of those hats. I don't know why, but. <laughs> I was looking. <laughs> Man. Five plays, 73 yards, culminating with a 44 yard touchdown reception. Matt Grothy to Amp Hill. Jim Levitt's not about to let his team quit here in Louisville. And they added the two-point conversion to boot. You know, we, we talked almost, you know, about the tradition here, with, and we're going to see this onside kick, and we'll talk a little bit more after that about I'll finish that thought. Justin Tichy, the punter, will attempt the onside kick. And these things are always an adventure. The high hop, the hands team is in there, bobbled momentarily, and then Louisville falls on top of it. I was just going to comment on how long Louisville's been around. We're talking about Johnny Unitas and the, the tradition here with the program. But let's think about it. South Florida has only had a football program for 10 years. And for them to be competitive like they are, they've only been Division One for a very short time. You know, so. There's a retired jersey. Lenny Lyles, another Baltimore Colt, played with the Unitas. Tom Jackson there, Chris Redman. Doug Buffone, my old buddy in Chicago. Had they not been talking about Dick Butkus, they'd always been ra raving yeah. about Doug Buffone. <laughs> played alongside Dick for many, many years. Harry Douglas, the man in motion, now moving to the slop. Brom rolls to his right and hits the tailback, Colby Smith. But, you know, let's look at it from this perspective, Mike. Since 1990, Louisville has spent $225 million on facility upgrades. And the athletic director, Tom Jurich, arrived in 97, and he has really helped to put this program on the map. They're playing on Thursday night. They said we'll play every night of the week. And they've had a, a home crowd that just loves to come out and, and watch them, not only in football, but basketball. You think the programs here, and everything else has just gotten so much better since the football team has come back around. But also when you have a great basketball program and tradition, it makes it nice for a town this size. Well, this is a fabulous facility and a great place to uh, play a football game, that's for sure. Colby Smith, again, the ball carrier, tackled by Stephen Nicholas. And if you're a football player, you've got everything yeah. here that you need to succeed. And they're recruiting.
They're recruiting on the national level. I mean, look at this. <laughs> when you see this, this, this camera do it justice, but when you come into the stadium, the field turf that's there, everything, it's just, it's been one of those things to watch. Uh, having gone from Indianapolis to Nashville and seeing the old stadium and now getting the chance to come in and actually see a live game here, it's, it's, it's like night and day. Third and five for Louisville, 24-8. They lead in the waning moments of the fourth quarter. And there's your man, Brock Bolin. Tackled by Jeremy Burnett. He's trying to get to the 100-yard mark. Hey, you gave the player the game away to Harry Douglas. I thought that was mine. Hey, man, I'm sorry, Brock. I got to go with the guys that made a lot of plays. I'm well, happy to see you making some. Well, I think he's had a season high tonight. Seven <laughs> carries, 38 yards. I'm kidding. He has had a great. You know, and I, these things, I wish they had existed. Those little armbands that back yeah, back oh, in the day, yeah, 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 yeah. make elbow. our guns look good. Well, yeah. well, not only that, it protects your elbows yeah. a little bit. Well, he, uh, not on him. He just got them rolled up. Yeah. <laughs> Bolin standing back there as the tailback, and he's going to get the football again. Call my number. Look at him, bro. Look at him. That's four tough yeah. yards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the conference championship is up for grabs. Rutgers down big to Cincinnati tonight. They're going to have a loss after this evening is done. And here's a look at the remaining schedule. The Cardinals have are at Pitt. The day after Thanksgiving, and then they've got UConn to wrap up their season here at uh, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. West Virginia's got South Florida and Rutgers. That's going to be a huge game. And Rutgers also <laughs> plays Syracuse next weekend. And Rutgers is losing 30 to 3 right now. So if there's a three way tie at the end of the season, who's the BCS? Representative, he's the Big East representative. <laughs> they have to sort that one out. George Stripling, though, he says I'm going to take care of right now. And Danny for for play, Kelly came over and smashed him. Yeah. The, but the one good thing about Michael, I mean, we talked about Michael Bush earlier. They have a stable of running backs that have done very well in his absence. Michael Bush, a big time player, broke his leg in the opening game of the season against Kentucky, but this is like midway through the third quarter. He had already rang up 128 yards rushing. I, I thought, again, I, I said it earlier tonight that he was a potential Heisman Trophy yeah, candidate. He was. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous player. This was basically without this season, you know. Just one game, seventh in school history in rushing yards, 39 rushing touchdowns, and a big man, too. Yeah. 6'3", 247. Well, everybody talks about his ability to run the football in between the tackles, but he can also get outside. I mean, he was fleet of foot enough to really get to the edges. This time, Anthony Allen gets the ball. Steven Nicholas again on the tackle. You know, the other thing that it shows is how well Louisville has recruited over the years. And now they're getting players where when they lose a guy like Michael Bush, they're still able to come back and have effective players to take the, the place there. And, you know, Colby Smith had been in the program for a while, so they were accustomed to what he could do. George Stripling. And Anthony Allen, both younger guys, stripping a sophomore and Allen, a freshman, getting some good time and really being battle tested. One thirty to go. Anthony Allen's going to take it around the corner, and that was a walk in the park. He got a great block from. I didn't see who catch the guy's number, but he... Breno Giacomini. Well, one of the tight ends and that watch the block of number 89 out front good blocking by all the tight ends yeah all the tight ends <laughs> you can yeah, name yeah, all yeah. of them Gary Barnage Scott Coon and 
Karamini. Overloaded that side and just power football. Yeah, when it was all the good work that the Louisville running backs and quarterback Brian Brom has done tonight, this Louisville defense stepped up big time and shut down young Matt Grothy, who was uh, putting up some imp impressive numbers. Yeah, they did. And, I, and I, I agree with you, Mike. That's what you needed to have from a guy uh, from a team to come back after all the things that they have been going through it's good to see Louisville play much better but South Florida had a chance they didn't take they didn't capitalize on it well it's time now to uh, revisit the buck stops here and I want to get your Heisman trophy picks obviously what Troy Smith did today at Ohio State might have clinched the whole thing for him yeah it, and I've toyed with Brady Quinn because I just think he's in that running because he's a quarterback there I, I saw him live against UCLA but Ray Rice was my guy I think today he may go out of that he has to drop but Darren McFadden may move up again but this is how it started before the game Calvin Johnson if I had the Heisman myself he would win it just because he is the best player bar none in college football and talking to everybody around the country uh, coaches you know guys that see football watch football he is the best player but it doesn't go to the best player it goes to the most popular players like a, a beauty pageant kind of thing <laughs> well you know it's going to be hard to argue with what Troy Smith today you know, yeah yeah did today against Michigan because it uh, was pretty spectacular and it's been good to see his maturation there I mean he, he has just gotten so much better over the, the last couple of years and, and Charles what about your top teams after what you've seen today well uh, my, my two teams may be going number two and three probably are dropping down that means Arkansas can move up that means Florida should move up but before the, the game started today these were the teams that I said were the best teams in football starting with Ohio State and they proved that to, tonight those now, are the BCS numbers alongside the, the schools well and, and if you look at Michigan they shouldn't drop that far down but USC is struggling right now with Cal and you know how difficult it is for me to put USC up there but they are really a strong team <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps uh, Florida jumps ahead of, of yes. Arkansas yeah As you can see right there I mean this is the BCS ranking on the side but this is how I, I mean, looking at Arkansas, knowing what you have to stop, they are still able to run the football. Florida quietly coming back into the radar screen. Michigan will drop, but I still don't think they should drop out too far because they played as well as you can play against a strong Ohio State. Now, USC could be the one that gets dropped down further because Cal has two losses on the season, one to Tennessee badly, and then the other one to Arizona last week. Grothy. Tender receiver. SJ Green can't hang on to it. Look again at the BCS standings. I definitely don't think that Ohio State, some people were talking about Ohio State playing Michigan again if, if the yeah. game was good enough. The game was good enough. There's no question about that. But Michigan gave up far too much yardage. I yeah. think, you know, they, yeah. they lost. And you, you, if you lose late, you're out late. Yeah. And that's, that's why so many people want to see this change to be you take the top 16 or the top 20 teams and play some kind of playoff system. And I, I agree. I mean, it, it's, but the tradition there is too long for the Bulls to see that change probably in our lifetime but you think about it when you finish the season like some of these teams will uh, November 18th or November 25th you still have four weeks before you play a ball game in some cases five or six weeks you go back to you go back to campus and you practice but you can see here where Louisville is they may move up with some of the things that have happened well, today. Hypothet Rut hypothetically let's say Rutgers you know finish the season at 11 and 0 yeah would they just, are they as good as Ohio State no are they good as USC no or Michigan no but, but at 11 and 0 do they deserve the right to have yeah. a chance to play for the national championship yes. absolutely and the only way they get that chance yeah, is I in agree. a playoff and the other thing is things change when you have that much time off how many guys do you get back If they can do it in high school and do it in Division I AA, why not on this level? 
And they talk about the sanctity and preserving the bowl games. The bowl games stay preserved. You can say they use the bowl games as the, the, the sure. initial games of the playoff level and work to the big bowls that are already in place. And it's a wrap here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, number 10 Louisville gets back on track and you can hear the railroad whistle as they beat the University of South Florida I was, 31 to 8. I was worried a little bit about Louisville as we came in and talked to their coaches and their staff but you can tell it took them a quarter and three drives actually but after that they showed why they are so strong this year and why they thought they had a chance to play for that national title game. So Bobby Petrino's team gets it done offensively, gets it done defensively, and wins it by a count of 31 to eight. Coming up next, SportsCenter U with Mike Hall and company. Once again, the final score here from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Louisville 31, South Florida eight for Charles Arbuckle. I'm Mike Adamley. This has been ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And thank you, Mike. An upset last year for South Florida over Louisville on ESPNU. Not so much this year. Tom Luganville and Mike Hall here breaking down all the big stories. In about eight minutes, we're going to have a full recap of everything.